The Appalachian State Mountaineers travel to the Rockies as they look to make it two wins in a row against the new look Grizzly offense and quarterback Jordan Johnson as he returns to the gridiron. It's next on Big Sky Game Day. From Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula, this is Big Sky Game Day. Tonight it's the 2013 season opener as the Montana Grizzlies host the Mountaineers from Appalachian State. Hi again everyone, I'm Chris Byers along with former Grizz quarterback John Edwards. And John, you can look across the country, you won't find a better matchup than this one tonight. What a better way to start the season, have two fabulous, historically classic teams right here in Missoula. You know, between these two, they played in 10 national championship games, I think 41 playoffs combined. Let's talk quarterbacks because for Montana, it's the return of Jordan Johnson. Yeah, the fans in this uh, in this town are excited to see what can happen. A year off, who knows if he'll be rusty or pick back up. The rumors that we hear around that uh, spring and summer ball has been very good. You remember what he did as a 19-year-old. He took Montana to the semifinals. I know Grizz fans are glad to get him back and on the field tonight. It'll be fun to watch him play. Now, the other side of the uh, football for Appalachian State, they have a very, very good quarterback of their own. Yeah, Laundry Jackson, the first quarterback in Appalachian State history that's going to likely throw for over 3,000 yards. Uh, it, it, it's really amazing for Montana's defense to try to capture him. He is a dual threat, and last year we saw that, see if Montana's defense can step up. Let's talk about that Montana defense because front seven may be as good as there is in the country. They are loaded up front and outstanding linebackers where they might have a bit of an issue tonight, and we'll find out, is in that defensive secondary. Yeah, that's the question mark. They need to be able to play well. That was their Achilles heel last year, and it hurt them, and they couldn't stay in games. Uh, Coach Ty Gregorak, I think, has them, has them locked up. We'll see. All right, so it's number 12, Appalachian State, against number 20, Montana, as the Grizz kick off the fall season tonight here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Now for the keys to the game for the Billings Hotel and Convention Center. Let's send it down on the field and join Sean Rady. Hi, Sean. Thanks, Chris. I'm Sean Ray here for your Billings Hotel Convention Center, Keys to the Game. And let's start with the visitors, the Appalachian State Mountaineers. For them first, they need to match the intensity of the Grizzlies, because you know Montana is going to come out here with a chip on their shoulder after a disappointing 2012 season that included an eight-point loss to those Mountaineers in Boone. Now second for them is the turnover battle. Last year, Montana actually outgained them in yardage, but they won the turnover battle four to nothing. If they can do that again today, they might be able to come away with a win. And number three is downfield throws. Look for quarterback Jamal Laundry Jackson to try to exploit that Grizz secondary that ranked 120th in the country in passing defense. Now for your home team, the Montana Grizzlies, of course, it's Jordan Johnson. All eyes are gonna be on number 10 as he makes his return tonight after sitting out all of last year. How will he play? Will there be rust? And how will he look in that new pro set offense? And number two is the pass rush. The Grizz have two great defensive ends in Zach Wagaman and, and Tyrone Holmes, but they gotta be careful because if they get up the field too much, they'll let Jackson, a mobile quarterback, run around so they kind of have a little bit of, of a mush controlled rush. And third is the kicking game. Chris Leiter was a little inconsistent in his freshman year and even more inconsistent in fall camp. And with these two teams so evenly matched, it might come down to his left leg, guys. Those are your Billings Hotel and Convention Center keys to the game. Don't go anywhere. Kickoff is next between the 12th ranked Appalachian State Mountaineers and the 20th ranked Montana Grizzlies. Stadium. The joint is jumping, John. We got a full house to watch two great nationally ranked programs. Here's the series history. They've only met three times before. Montana leads two to one. The last game, though, went to the Mountaineers. It was a thriller at Kid Brewer Stadium as Appalachian State won at 37 to 28. Yeah, this year a different thing, and, and what everybody's looking to is whether Jordy Johnson's going to be the game changer and whether his abilities that they lost last year are going to make the difference in this game. 
Here is the first poll released, uh, the FCS poll. North Dakota State, number one in the country, the two-time defending national champions. Boy, did they have a win last night as they went into Manhattan and knocked off Kansas State. That was amazing. The Bobcats from just down the road at Montana State are at number two. Eastern Washington, also out of the Big Sky at number three. They're playing Oregon State tonight. We'll see how they do. And then Appalachian State, as we mentioned, number 12 and other teams in the Big Sky Conference, including Cal Poly, also ranked in the top 25. Loaded conference. That's fun to see. As a football fan in the Big Sky Conference, we want to see that. It, it, it's like anytime you get a team that's competing at that kind of level and it's in your conference, it gives more credibility to your conference, particularly with the playoff run that Big Sky Conference teams have had in recent history. Appalachian State will receive the football to start the game. Yeah, that game last year, was a terrific game, was played at better than 30,000 fans at Kid Brewer Stadium. I know you probably watched it along with me, but uh, it went right down to the wire. Montana only trailed by one in the fourth quarter, but the Mountaineers put together a great drive to win it at the end. Well, when you talk about two unique programs, uh, Boone is one place that you can get the same kind of atmosphere as you can get here in Missoula, Montana. And that's why the fans love it. They show up down there, ours show up up here. And that's what makes an atmosphere like an opening game in Missoula, Montana, and the first, first regular season night game ever been held in Washington Grizzly Stadium and John Hoyt Field. Terrific atmosphere, as always, when you're in Missoula for college football. Keep an eye on number 15, Tony Washington. He's a consensus All-American, and he is going to receive the football at the goal line. Washington up over the 10 of the 15, got some room at the 20. And Appalachian State will go to work from their own 25-yard line. Wilson in on the tackle for the Grizz. Let's take a look at the Payne West insurance starting lineups for tonight's game. And we'll start with the offensive line. It's a veteran line for the Mountaineers. Counts Lamb, Graham Fisher under center, AC and Will Corbin. There's been a lot of talk, Chris, here in the offseason uh, in, in fall camp where Montana is going to play a, a more basic system on defense and try to keep things in front of them and not give up the gains and yardages they did last year. They go to the air on first down, and it's complete up over the 30 to the 35 and close to a first down. A flags come flying in after the play. Bethard on the receiving end of that pass from Jackson. Personal foul, face mask, number 32 defense, 15 yards penalty, automatic first down. So that'll tack on extra yardage, uh, face mask. Well, App State comes out with a with a classic, it's basically like a running play. It's a, a it's not even a screen. It's a it's a kick outside. One of your wide receivers has to lay a block for you, which he did a fabulous job. You saw it, it was an eight-yard play before the 15-yard personal foul. There's your look at your backs and receivers for Appalachian State. That's a good core of receivers. And they bring a lot of offense to this unit. You talked about the Montana defense, John, that front seven. They're going to be tested tonight. But I tell you, they're good. They're physical. They're strong. And they've been around now for a while. Jackson throws it out. Complete short gain to the 45-yard line and then hammered out of bounds go right back to the same play that we saw before. It's basically a quick screen. It's a it's a running play taking taking place on the edge. One on one matchup. Get a block and see what your wideout can do. McElfrish with the catch. Gain of five. Second and five. This time they'll stay on the ground for the first time. And that's going to be marked just short of the first down. That was Ricky Ferguson on the carry. Caleb Kidder the defensive tackle who's starting in place of Tonga Takai today due to a suspension. Missed the play there. Third and one. Jackson on the quarterback. Keeper's got a first down and then some. A nice read by the quarterback as he takes it up over the left side to the 30-yard line and a first down. Well, that gives you a great example of Laundry Jackson and what he can do to you. Here he's had the, from the start two very clean passes and right here he's a dual threat on the read option Montana has to pick or choose one of the guys 
So Laundry Jackson gives the Mountaineers a first down. The ball's on the 31-yard line. Just underway, first quarter, no score, opening drive for the Mountaineers. You know, as good as Appalachian State is, John, they've never won a game west of the Mississippi. 0 for 9, they're trying to break that string tonight. Yeah, hard to, hard to believe with the kind of tradition that they have and the history they have that that, that stat exists. And what a great way to start in Missoula uh, for App State, though. I, whether it be penalties, they, they got 15-yard penalties, but they appear to be executing perfectly. You come into a hostile crowd like this, and you're on the 31-yard line, and you kind of got Montana on, the, on their heels. Yeah, you do. So first down here, they'll stay on the ground. Nothing doing that time. Good job up front by that Montana defense. Now loss of one on the play. Well, you talk about the front seven. You can see them inside here. Nowhere to go. Just bottled up. Trevor Ream in on the stop for the Grizz. Second and 10. Laundry Jackson this time operates out of the gun. Plenty of time, throws across the middle, incomplete. That pass was too high, intended for McCall McElfresh, and it'll bring up third down. Well, first real mistake we've seen from App State. Incompletion gets a third and long and deep, deep territory. There's the Montana secondary. They'll be tested here on third down. And the crowd is into it. As you might expect, four receivers set for the Mountaineers. Two to each side. Ferguson in the backfield. Laundry Jackson looks left. Now pulls it down. He's got some running room inside the 30. But boy, did they contain quickly there. It picks up maybe two on the play and will bring up fourth down. Now Montana, the defense there went into a, a, a 30 front. You can see just three down linemen dropped a couple in, in coverage, allowed Laundry Jackson to take a look down, down the field. And then number 37. Jordan Tripp comes up and makes a sure, sure tackle on a tough player. This is going to be a 45-yard field goal attempt from Joe Stewart from the left hash. Ball's got plenty of leg, and this one is no good. So Stewart comes up empty, and Appalachian State is turned away on their initial drive, and Montana takes over. Well, Chris, you and I talked about it in the beginning, kind of a bend-don't-break right. mentality of Montana's defense. After last year, they just could not stay in games because the points were, would turn over so fast. Here we see Coach Ty Gregorak with that kind of, hey, let's keep this thing in front of us, make sure they earn everything they have, mm -hmm. and hope they make a mistake. Be sure on your tackles. And it benefited Montana right there. That's a good stop from considering the position they were in. So Montana with the football for the first time. Jordan Johnson under center. Johnson, a little play action, rolls left. Keeps the ball and is brought down for a two-yard loss. Boy, that was just great defense by the Mountaineers as Johnson tried to get outside but was tackled for a two-yard loss. Let's take a look now at this Montana offense and it all starts up front with those big boys and when I say big I ain't lying and they're led by the co-captain 315 pound Danny Kistler and here are the receivers uh, Jordan Canada gets the start at running back and of course Jordan Johnson up under center Johnson with the handoff and again not much running room there Maybe a gain of one on the play, so that's going to bring up third and 11. Well, you can see Appalachian State's linebackers are playing fast and playing about half angry. Both of them uh, locked, closed on Jordy Johnson on that first play for the one-yard loss, and the little delayed inside draw had nothing to him. Numbers on Johnson from two years ago, threw for 2,400 yards and 21 touchdowns. And he's looking at a third and 11 from the 27-yard line. Johnson looks out here to the right. He's got a man wide open at the 45 and a first down. Boy, what a nice catch out there by Cam Warren. He's not the biggest guy, but he's able to get up and make that catch. 
Boy, a nice play from Montana. Good confidence builder for Jordy Johnson. Try to get a completion, get something done. That's not an easy throw. One of the major question marks here for Montana, too, is wide receivers. Uh, mm -hmm. Nobody really proven on this uh, on this team. And right there, to get something out of your, uh, you know, backed up into your old goal, get a long third down. So Montana converts and a first down from the 47. Here's Johnson, flips it out there in the flat. That's caught up over midfield and down to the 47 yard line. Nice job after the catch is Sean Haynes as we take a look at the Appalachian State defense. Robinson, Bronson and Ronald Blair up front in the 3-4 in your linebacking core. Towns, Carl Anderson, Law and Frazier. And in the back, uh, back secondary, a Walker and Ross back there a gain of six on that last play so second and four is Montana in Mountaineer territory for the first time here's Johnson throws it out there again and it's caught at the 45 into the 40 and that should be enough for the first down as Jamal Jones brings that one down well, we're seeing everybody here with Jamal Jones and getting everybody involved early in the game I mean they've got to again that's one of the, the major question marks here but Jordan Johnson seems to be sharing the ball. And Jamal Wilson now checks in to the lineup for the first time. He's in the backfield. First down from the 41. Oh, and that's going to go on a well, false start there in the backfield. We'll back him up five. False start. Number 34 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. You know, John, you can see one big difference from the quarterbacks from last year. Uh, and give credit to Trent McKinney. I mean, the freshman came in and did an outstanding job for the Grizz and played very well at times. But when you look at a guy like Jordan Johnson and that arm strength, and you talked about that long, that deep out, that's a hard ball to throw and, and to get something on it. Absolutely. And, and it really is true, at least it was for me back when I played, to get in a rhythm early mm -hmm. uh, and, and get a couple completions to get feeling good about what you're doing. And, and that's, a, that's a hard throw to try to make on third, uh, third and long on your first series. Grizz stay on the ground. Good running room to the 40. And Canada all the way down to the 35-yard line. And that is close to a first down. It'll be three short. Good blocking up front. Beautiful blocking. Good little move here at the end by Jordan Canada. Canada has been a solid player for Montana yeah. after all these years. You know, there's been such great running backs and, and, and different kinds of. We, we look at, uh, you know, last year you had Nguyen, who has a younger yep. brother on the team now, and Dan Moore and, and, and things like that. And Canada has been very solid. Second and five from the 36. They'll stay on the ground. Canada tries to get to the outside, and he is cut down. Beautiful open field tackle by Kevin Walton, the sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, you can see that App State's defense is very, very fast. You can tell how quickly they're closing on these plays. Uh, here, Canada thinks he's got an opening on the end, and boom, it shuts the door just like that. You know, that's the kind of thing in these first games that you don't always, you cannot recreate this on the practice field. And seeing these closing speeds and all these things, these defenses and offenses are kind of figuring each other out a little bit here. Third and five from the 36. Johnson has a man at the 30. That's complete. And a first down for Montana. And on the receiving end again is Jamal Jones. And you talked about the wide receivers and that lack of experience. You know, Ellis Henderson comes back from this year, but there's a lot of new faces out there. He's one of them and a great catch. Yeah, you're right. Ellis Henderson's the he had 23 receptions last year. That's the most coming back on this team. Great job by Jordan Johnson there. Recognize that's the first pressure I've seen out of Appalachian State all game. Recognize where it comes from. The general rule throw into where the pressure's coming from because there will be a void there. And that's exactly what he did. So that'll move the sticks in a first down, 28-yard line for Montana. Nice opening drive for the Grizz. They stay on the ground up over the left side. The give is to Trayvon Van, and Trayvon Van is the newest addition to the Montana team, a transfer, and they're real high on him. Yeah, Marshall transfer that they kind of help, they feel help kind of make that void in that, in that backfield. You know, we've got Canada and some very young running backs, but they felt like they needed somebody to step in that had some experience to kind of help kind of round the group out and they're they're very high on him. He stays in the game and is in the backfield on second and six picked up four on that last play. Johnson pulls it down now flips it out here in the flat that's complete at the 25 and down to the 20 yard line. 
close to a first down. Be a couple of yards short as Wilson, the fullback, with the catch. Another great example here. You see Kevin Walton coming up from the strong safety position of just how quickly this is closing. You can see here, everything's done correctly. Nice catch by the fullback, a little bit out in front of him. But look how close, or look how quickly they close and, and put those gaps, shut them down. Third and two. And they give it to Van, who's up inside and fumbles the ball out of bounds right at the first down marker. It just depends on where they're going to spot it. Well, Van right there, if you can see on this replay, he missed the hole. You could see him run right by it. That's something the coaches will tell him when you get back. Those, those big boys, you've got to have that patience to let them, let them make that hole for you. And you could see him just scoot right by it, want to get outside. you got a team like Appalachian State that's this fast and can wake can spread the field. You want to wait for those holes to develop and then get north and south right away. Here we go. The Grizz are going to go for it. Fourth and one from the 19. Canada straight ahead. He gets hit right at the line of scrimmage. And oh boy, this is going to be close as they are coming in from the sideline right at the first down marker. I think he might be. Well, we'll see. The nose of the football is sitting on the 18 yard line and that's where they need to be. You want to take it? You want to take a shot at this one, John? No, no thanks. We'll <laughs> let the professionals do it. Seriously, you don't want to take a <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say he's got it by the nose of the football. I boy, it's very close. You had yeah, John Law coming in there and filling. You had a great shot on the replay there of the of the shot right at the line. Boy. No, he is short. All right. Well short. 0 for 1. <laughs> Appalachian State gets the football back. 5.53 to go in the opening quarter. No score from Missoula. This week, the Bobcats hope to keep that. Jackson, Aaron went out. Goes deep, incomplete. Mackle Fresh, the intended receiver, got out there in single coverage, but ball was overthrown and second down. Well, as we talked about, Appalachian State, this will be their final year uh, playing in their conference that they're in. And the SOCON, they are moving up to the FBS level along with Georgia Southern. And it's interesting, they're the top two teams picked in their conference to win it yet they'll be ineligible for the playoffs this year. <laughs> oh, complete, but nothing doing after the catch. That's just a great job by Matt Hermanson all over his receiver to make the tackle. Around the FCS this week, and of course we talked about that huge upset in Manhattan last night. North Dakota State knocks off Kansas State 24-21. Townsend also with an upset win, and there's some games going on tonight we'll keep you posted on. Flags all over the place. Might have had a quick yep. start there on Shaq Counts. Ball start, number 63 offense, five yard penalty, still third down. John, I, you know, I, I, I am baffled by teams that would opt to go to the FBS, and I mean, if they can do it, great, more power to them, but it just seems to me that when you're playing at the FCS level, you're in the perfect position to play at a high-quality level, and you get that experience of a playoff and a true national championship. Could not could not agree more. There are success stories. We've all seen them. Everyone State. wants to be yeah. Boise State. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's certainly more failures than there are success yeah. stories. Here's a draw play that's going to go for some good yardage. Up over the 20, but that is well short of the first down, and Appalachian State will be forced to kick this one away. Well, Montana benefited from the uh, false start. There goes from a, a third and a third and just short of 10 to a third and 14. They're able again to sit back and let everything happen in front of them and make a tackle. Gets himself in a position to receive some punt and flip field position here. So Zach Maddox on to do the kicking. He stands inside his 10 yard line. Kick comes down at the 40 yard line. 
Appalachian State will down it at the 30. So the Grizz, when we come back, will have the football from the 33-yard line and a first down after these words from Allegiance Benefits. You're watching Big Sky Game Day. Montana onto the football field for the second time. No score in this game, 4.18 to go in the opening quarter. Appalachian State, Scott Satterfield, of course, entering his first season as head coach. He's an alum of the school, has been there for 13 seasons as an assistant. Of course, next year they move to the Sun Belt Conference along with Georgia Southern as they make the jump to Division I football. Ten returning starters off that 2012 team, and they bring a very talented group into Missoula tonight. Van, not much there. Give them maybe two on the play to the 35. Second and eight, John Montana, also with some new personnel, new offensive coordinators this year. Yeah, this year they're trying a, a dual coordinator position, and I, frankly, I've never seen it, and I've never been on a team where, where they've taken those roles. But there's a, there's a run, there's a run coordinator. You know, Scott Gregg, that's a pretty good guy to have. Yeah. Uh, and Kafense as the the pass coordinator, and you know so far it seems to be working pretty nicely. But I've just never seen that happen. Here's Van with some good running straight ahead, and he's up over midfield with a 49-yard line. Man, you talk about some power in those legs. How about that bit of running? That's a great run. Keeps his keeps his eyes up field, and, and what a beautiful spin move until Appalachian State can actually finally get him down. Gain is all the way into Mountaineer territory at the 48-yard line, and this is something we're going to see a lot of this year, John, that straight-ahead running behind that big offensive line. Yeah, they've changed their offense, gone again to that kind of one, two mm -hmm. tight end pro-style offense. And from year to year, you know, depending on the kind of athletes you have, particularly a quarterback, it can be a helpful in that offense. Jordan Canada up over the left side, and he's got seven yards. Well, this Chris fans, uh, we should be very familiar with this kind of offense. Of course, Bobby Hawk was the master of that. Uh, Bob, they called it Bobby Ball, where they just grind it right at you. Yeah, it's control the clock, make sure you don't make turnovers, mm -hmm. win the field position uh, battle, which Montana with that last punt that we saw, obviously they started with great position, uh, field position on this drive. And that's, you know, it's a very good way to control what's in your control in a game. Second and five, Johnson fires out here to the right. Scott, a man at the 35, up inside the 30. And another first down, great catch and run by Ellis Henderson. Henderson, one of those guys we talked about that had pretty good numbers last year, John. Six foot, 185 pounds, not a big kid, but you can tell there, a nice stiff arm once he gets by you. The initial move to move somebody off center and get upfield right away. Haynes and Warren split to the left. And they've got Van out here as a wide receiver to the right. Canada got a little running room to the 25. Canada to the 20. And a late flag comes in after the run. A little extracurricular down there, I think, around the 20-yard line. Great job on the offensive line there from Montana on that left side, John Schmang and Trevor Poole. Get this, these two guys, 6'7", 291, 6'5", 290. Pressure right into their faces there, and they were able to handle it quickly and move it off and allow Canada, you know, again, running into a blitz, ideally not the good thing. It's very hard for a line to pick that up as it's coming at them. A couple of senior guys did a nice job there. And that offensive line is is big. Oh, sleds. Yeah. Well, legal block below the waist, number 23, offense. 15-yard mm. penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So that's going to go against Cam Warren. Back him up 15 yards. Hmm. You don't really see it from that angle. No. Right? You can't see it from that angle. If it was at all. He's he's <laughs> he's kind of wondering what did I do? Senior out of Bellevue, Washington. So. The ball all the way back on the 39-yard line. First and 22. Inside of two minutes, opening quarter, no score. Out of the eye formation. Johnson pulls it down, now rolls right. Still looking, now keeps the football inside the 35, down to the 32-yard line. 
So Johnson gets seven back on the run. And this is the one element that he brings to the game. He's got, as you mentioned, Johnny's got a very good arm, but when he gets out in open space, he can create a lot by running the football as well. Well, and it's all about making decisions. You could see right there, there was a, uh, there was a, a comeback on the outside, looked like a close, close throw. Instead of making a mistake here, you're still in a good position. Tuck the ball down, get seven yards, give yourself another chance at second in a very long ways, but you still have the ball and you got seven yards. Second and 16. They spot the ball at the 33-yard line. Three receivers set to the left. Johnson looks that way, still looking. Now throws out there and caught inside the 20-yard line. That's Cam Warren. Right near the first down marker. I think he's going to be a yard short. Well, Montana going to be faced exactly with the same situation here. You can see nice job by the offensive line providing the time and a good zip. Jordan Johnson got up very gingerly after being clipped there from the back side and kind of limped on over to the huddle. So the gain is all the way down to the 18, third and one. That's the other thing, Chris, in, in this pro style offense, you get in third and one, third and two, three, four, and five. This gives you so many more yeah. options versus that spread where you can't really lock it in and get yourself two or three yards if you need it. Right in their wheelhouse on this kind of play, right? It'll power eye. Jordan Johnson changing the play here. He sees something. The give us to Van. Van tries the right side and looks like he's got just enough from the official coming in from the far side. Needed just a yard. Chris, we talked about the benefit of, of having Jordan Johnson, not only from a confidence of the of the offense and the confidence of the team, but you can see there is what he had the opportunity there. You run, when your run plays are being set up, you've got certain techniques you want to run to, and they're switching up front. Appalachian State's going back and forth switching, so he's got to find the one technique or the three technique, whatever the given play is designed to go to, and he easily finds it and gets him in the right play. 15 minutes of football in the books. No score from Washington State, or Washington Grizzly Stadium, rather, as the Grizz and Appalachian State. We come back, Grizz with the football and the first down at the 17-yard line. Back after these words from your local stations. You're watching Big Sky Game Day. State. Okay. Back for the start of the second quarter here in Missoula. No score between Montana and Appalachian State. But the Grizz are knocking on the door with a first down at the 17-yard line. Montana's moved the ball well, John, but uh, so far, neither team able to come away with points. Yeah, you know, Chris, it, it does look like, at least it appears to me, that both teams that first quarter kind of, you didn't see a lot of blitzing, you didn't see a bunch of fancy stuff, kind of sniffing each other out, see where everybody falls, settle into the game. Trayvon Van gets to the outside. Nice little stiff arm there at the end of the run. So they say it was out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Gain of seven and second and three. A beautiful use of the stiff arm there when you get on the outside. This game always ends up one on one matches. If you can design the play to get your good guys against their good guys in one-on-one -on -one matches, it's gonna come down to who can make the, big, the bigger and better play. Van gets the football again, so speed moving inside the five, he's down to the three yard line, setting up a first and goal. But one thing's pretty evident right now, uh, this is a kid that isn't gonna get arm tackled. Yeah, it is, and, and look at that offensive line, look at that hole, does a nice job we were a little critical earlier in the in the series, or earlier in the first quarter, where he ran by a hole right there. You can see it. He found it and got he got upfield right away. When you got an offensive line like that, I mean, that's the, you, you got to use him. I mean, it's six seven, six five, six eight, six eight across the board, 315 pounds. Second down. Johnson falls down, now loses the football, and it looks like Appalachian State has it, and they do. So Johnson just tripped coming out from under center. 
lost the football and the Mountaineers recovered. Let's see if you can see through the feet here if he gets stepped on. Oh, that's our play earlier. It looked like in the last play that he might have got his foot caught up right there. It yep. gets it stepped on and can't move it. You know, easy to be critical up here in the box right there, but if you got a play like that, you want Johnson, instead of trying to get the ball handed off, uh, grab it and learn to, uh, you know, live to fight another day. Ronald Blair was the guy that jumped on it for the Mountaineers. So Montana's turned away again inside the red zone, and Appalachian State has the football just underway here in the second quarter. It's been a while since the App State offense has been on the field. Good straight ahead running. Got some running room up over the 12-yard line. That's Paul McGlory. Good job by McGlory and Appalachian State's front five making a hole there. You can see it was beautifully designed and opened up. It gets you, when you're backed up against the, the north end zone, particularly five yards on first down, gives you a real manageable position to be in. So McGlory with good yardage there. Now they'll fire it out there to Washington who makes the catch at the 20 up to the 24 in a first down. Let's go down on the field for a Honda sideline report and join Sean Rainey. Thanks, Chris. And one thing to look out for on this defense is where defensive coordinator Ty Gregorak is coaching from. Last year he was on the sidelines in the fall scrimmages. He went up in the booth and the sidelines and Brock Coyle, a senior linebacker, said he prefers him on the sidelines because he likes his fiery attitude. Thanks, Chris. Jackson keeps the football, but he's going to be thrown down for a loss of five on the play. Great defense there for Montana. Losses back to the 20. Crittenden on the sack. Almost looked like Laundry Jackson didn't know exactly what he wanted to do. Again, kind of one of those zone read plays where you're watching the D end. If he falls down, you take the ball and go. Nice job by Montana making him guess and wait. Second and 12. Laundry Jackson's going to be, oh, he dances out of trouble, tries to get it to Washington. Got rid of the football, but pressure up the middle that time for that Montana defense. Derek Pretendon on both these plays was the defensive end that made the nice job on the play earlier on Laundry Jackson, making him decide. Again, in here, forcing, forcing Laundry Jackson to get rid of the ball when he didn't want to get rid of it. Right there. Third and 12. Montana's defense is in the same position that we saw when Appalachian State was stuck earlier in that very long third down situation. You can see the three down linemen that you have. You got linebackers bouncing around just to try to create confusion in the holes. Here comes the pressure and they'll stop the play. You, know, you, you wonder how how many penalties can be attributed to the crowd in the stadium, especially delay of games. And look at this. Eastern Washington knocks off Oregon State, which was ranked 25th in the country. Vernon Adams, six touchdowns, four through the air and two rushing. Boy, I'll tell you. Watch out for this Big Sky Conference. Whoa, wow, man. that's, uh, nobody saw that one coming. Third and 17. Ball's on the 16-yard line. And deafening noise down in the stadium. And Laundry Jackson wants a timeout. Timeout. Appalachian State. Big Sky Game Day is brought to you in part by Blackfoot Telecommunications Group, the region's business technology leader. Northwestern Energy, delivering a bright future. Montana Ford, drive one at your Montana Ford store. CompareFord.com. Appalachian State facing a third and 17 from the 16 yard line. McClure in the backfield with Laundry Jackson. Three receivers set to the left. And that north end zone uh, giving App State some fits right here in the second quarter. No, not an enviable position to be in. <laughs> I, 
They've already got the, they've got one delay a game, so it just gives them more to fight for. And they stay on the ground of McGlure, safe play as he gets it up to the 20-yard line. And the Mountaineers again be forced to kick this one away. So Montana figures to have good field position again when they get the football back. I think that's a good decision on that safe play. You know, yeah. that's a situation where nothing good is going to come out of that. You know, you you may pick one up, but the chances of having mass confusion down there and forcing a turnover is just too much. Bentley Critcher standing inside his 10 yard line will kick it to Ellis Henderson, who stands at his 40. End over end kick. Henderson signaling for the fair catch and makes it at the 40 yard line. 12, 10 to go. Quarter number two, still no score between the Mountaineers and the Grizzlies. Back after these words from your local stations. You're watching KTMF Fox. Montana with the football at the 40 yard line and John Griffith had great field position tonight. Yeah, you and I talked about it on the break here. You'd really want to have had manufactured some points out of having the field mm -hmm. position the way you were uh, in the in the entire first quarter and here at the, the top of the second. And again, it's early in the season, uh, you know, but Coach Delaney, if anybody knows, you get yourself in that position and you go away without anything. Mm -hmm. You're just letting a great team like Appalachian hang State hang in. And yep. Well, Montana was so much returning experience, 19 starters coming back from last year and trying to rewrite the ship after a disappointing season. It's, here's Johnson now pulls it back. He's going to go long and deep down there inside the 30 to Henderson. Does he hang on? Yes, he does. So Henderson with a beautiful catch down to the 10-yard line. Well, you had to think, Chris, that this was going to happen pretty soon. As we talked a lot about in the first quarter is how, how quickly App State's secondary was closing on a lot of these run plays. So they here run a quick little play action and then go up top and to, you know, take advantage of those safeties, get more and more involved in the run game, and a great catch and a, and a nice throw. So a good run dick game will do for you, right? That's right. Opens up that outside. Canada now in the backfield. Wilson's the fullback. Canada. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for two. And it's second down. So this is the third time now for Montana in the red zone. Of course, the last trip down, Johnson uh, coughed the football up as he tripped coming out from under center. But they're right back here again on the eight-yard line with a second down. Kind of hope to, if, if you are Montana, be able to rely on that run game of yours in situations like this to get you get you close. Here's a little pitch to Canada. Tries to get to the outside. And out of bounds at the seven. Nice job stringing out the play was Rashad Towns. Does a nice job of just not letting Canada just cut it up inside. Yeah, you're right. Great play by Rashad Towns there. And again, App State's defense gives you that ability to stretch the field. Speed is the benefit because you push towards the sidelines, you run out of real estate at some point in time. And their speed allows them to keep pushing, 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 pushing until you're left with no any other options. Third down, this time they'll jump to a four receiver set, empty backfield. Here's Johnson, straight drop. Now throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana. Boy, he threw it into traffic, but he threaded the needle in a perfect strike. As the Grizz have their first touchdown of the 2013 season, Henderson on the reception, coming across the middle and score six. You know, first and foremost, you got to give credit to the, the guys up front there. Yeah. Gave him time to sit in there. Secondly, you got to say Jordan Johnson stood in there while things kind of collapsing around you a little bit. But the more you can stay in there, keep your feet calm and wait for the play to develop, and then through a great ball, Henderson pulled it down. Good combination for the two of those on this series. And the extra point is blocked. So Montana on the touchdown pass from Jordan Johnson to Henderson. Extra point no good. Grizz lead by six. 10.30 to go, second quarter.
Chris Leiter's extra point is blocked. As extra point no good. Getting some good uh, penetration up front by Appalachian State. And six to nothing ball game. Let's go down for a Honda sideline report and Sean Rainey. Yeah, guys, Ellis Henderson, the sophomore from Portland, originally gray shirted at Hawaii before transferring to Montana. And coaches rave about his big playability. And he said besides working out in summer workouts, he spent the summer watching highlights of Jerry Rice. Pretty good guy to mentor. Chris. Thank you, Sean. And this will be Washington at the goal line. Washington to the 15, up over the 20. Breaks a tackle. Flag comes down. Washington finally ridden out of bounds at the 35-yard line. But we'll see what the penalty's about. The Ford scoring drive for Montana, just four plays, 60 yards, capped off on the touchdown strike from Johnson to Ellis Henderson. And of course, the extra point, no good. So that'll back them up, and boy, Appalachian State has not won the battle of field position tonight. They've just been deep in their own end on just about every drive. John, this is a decidedly different stadium than when you played uh, some 12, 13 years ago. And one thing they didn't have, uh, of course, the stadium expansion, but how do you like the lights? I think it's a great addition. I, you know, college football, we watch it on ESPN. We do all these things. You got these wonderful night games in these in these cool settings around the country. It's fun to have it in the regular season here in, in Missoula. Pressure from straight up the middle. Jackson able to dump it off in a nice gain by Marcus Cox as he takes it all the way up over the 25 to the 28-yard line, and that's a first down. No, Montana got fooled there. Uh, just a classic old screen pass. You got Cox here who really lowers his shoulder and, and does a nice job getting up field, getting him out of a bad situation. Laundry Jackson threw for over 3,200 yards last year. Now fires out here, and this one is almost intercepted. Good coverage by Montana. Harris thought he might have had a shot at it as the ball popped into the air. Connor Levsock getting in there and putting a hand on this oh, yeah. from the outside position there. Very well done. Connor filling in where his brother's left off. Washington on the screen gets it up over the 30. Short gain on the play. Yeah, there's been a Levsock in a Grizz uniform for a whole lot of years. For a long time. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing, the, and, and all to be such great uh, contributors. So third and three now from the 33. Nine and a half minutes to go here in half number one. The Mountaineers would love to get out of this situation. You, we've talked about the field position game, but this is a spot they need to get a first down here and move on. Jackson rolls out of trouble, now pulls it down, getting pressure. And incomplete. Great pressure by Montana. Jordan Tripp creating yep. the pressure there and, 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 and making Jackson throw the ball again. It's all about, uh, it, he had enough time to get something off, but just nothing open. It appears here, Montana's defense and the philosophy of letting those corners have stuff in front of them is paying off. Well, Jordan Tripp, one of those guys that uh, we've talked a lot about in the preseason as being a real factor on this Montana defense this year. Well, those those three linebackers, Jordan Tripp, Brock Coyle, and John Kanagata, they account for 30% of all the tackles on that defense last year. Uh, you you got to utilize these guys. High booming kick. Henderson makes the catch inside the 30. Late flag comes down. far away from the play I uh, certainly didn't see anything it's been pretty decent as far as penalties are concerned yeah. for a first game and we've had a couple procedural penalties but you know that 
it always happens these first couple games where everybody's getting used to each other. Here's the officials for today. During the return, illegal block in the back on the return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And that'll back Montana up deep into their own end with 9.07 to go in the second quarter. Back after these words from your local stations. Jordan Johnson back on the field leading the Montana offense. And so far, you, well, you can't do much better than that, John. You'd like those numbers, wouldn't you? Yeah, nine for could, nine. I, I could promise you I've never had that number <laughs> when I was here. Uh, you're just modest. 131 oh. yards, <laughs> the touchdown. <laughs> yep, that's as good a quarterback rating as you're going to get. Yeah. Yep, he's been very effective so far in this game and got his work cut out for him now. Ball at the 18 yard line and a first down, a deep pitch. And here's Van who just slams it up there, up over the 20 to the 23 yard line. Good hard running by this transfer from Marshall. Good hard hitting by yeah. Carl Anderson, uh, inside linebacker here, 45 there. That's great football right there. You got two guys going 100%. Everybody's playing clean and good tackles, good hits. That's what it's all about. Gain of five on the play. Second down from the 23. Stay on the ground and Van Ooh. with a nice cutback. He's got room to the 40. Van to the 45, spins forward to the 49 yard line and a first down for Montana. Boy, you can tell why they like that. Uh, this this was created all by him. Here, looks for the cutback. Beautiful spin move. Wow. Look at those moves. Well, he just stopped on a dime. You know, Ab State's lucky they've got the speed that they do there because they were able to close that down and keep it from being a very long touchdown. So the gain is all the way to the 48 and a first down with eight minutes to go in quarter number two. Mountaineers show pressure from the outside. This time they do a pretty good job wrapping up right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of two on the play as Jordan Canada gets the call. Oh, Chris, this looks a lot like Grizzly football yeah. of the past with Bobby say, Huck. Here, yeah. I mean, you, you see where we are in this game. We're, we're, we're marching down at the end of the second quarter. We're running the ball. We're slowly taking time off the clock. That's the way they're thinking right now. App State, we haven't seen much from them in regards to any any pressure or blitzes or anything like that. Really haven't seen from either team. Looks like they're content to go at it right now. Here's Johnson who throws out there. He's got a man wide open at the 45 yard line. Out of bounds and should be enough for the first down as Jones comes down with a catch. Joel Ross, Ross on the tackle, all kinds of cushion out there. That's, yeah. as, that's as easy as it gets. You know, something like that, and again, having, having somebody that's had experience like Jordy Johnson is, you know, there's times where if you get a cushion like that, it doesn't matter what play you have on, you pick the football up and throw it mm -hmm. to it and let him, let him get upfield. Well, the receivers are doing a nice job. They're just sitting down, going out five, six yards, sitting down, making the easy catch. Grizz back to work on offense. Gain of four on the play, second and six. When they are most decidedly controlling the clock in this game in the first half. And Pull you back. talked about it with that, you know, the Grizz going back to this pro set offense. You have ball control and, and you're seeing it executed perfectly right now. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. In particular, look at here. Yeah, that's some pretty good numbers. 69. That's good in the, in the middle of the second, uh, middle of the second quarter. But uh, timeout taken by Montana. Timeout, Montana. Their first timeout. That's their first of the half. We're going to talk it over with 6.17 to go in quarter number two. Media timeout. Planning. Second and five from the 36. Montana moving the football and doing it primarily on the ground. And they'll stay there. Short gain on the play will bring up third down. Recent history for Montana, and we look back to last year, 
John, their first losing season in 27 years when they were five and six. Now, we say they've not been to the FCS playoffs since 2009. That's because the, the 2011 playoff run was vacated because of the penalties by the NCAA. The upside, 11 All Big Sky players returning on the roster, and Jordan Tripp named the Big Sky preseason defensive MVP. That's been a tumultuous uh, yeah. you know, 18 months around uh, around Missoula, and I think everybody's kind of get back to some normalcy here. Here's Johnson, fires across and completed the 30-yard line, and then a whole lot more as Nakarado makes the catch. Now a flag comes in at the end of the play, and that's going to tack on more, I think, a personal foul at the end of the play. Nakarado, 5'7", 166. He's got a burst on him. You better have him in the open space because you're not going to find him in the middle at 5'7", <laughs> but Jordan put him on it right, right, you know, right in stride to make sure he can turn it upfield and get some more yardage. After the play, personal foul, number 88, defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line, first down. So that'll move the football inside the 10, and here's here it is right at the end of the play. Yeah, John Law there, we've talked, we've said his name a lot. He's had a lot of tackles and been all over the field tonight for App State, but here you know, it's just a just a mismatch uh, with Nakarada on, a, on an inside linebacker. So Montana will try to capitalize. Here's Van, takes it down close to the two yard line. And it'll bring up second down. Head coach Mick Delaney started way back in 1968 as the wrestling coach. <laughs> he is uh, a well-tenured coach in his second season here with Montana. And the University of Montana and Grizz fans alike have yeah. a, a lot to be thankful for the fact that he came in and, Absolutely. and was a rock for this program. He's a great man. Second down from the two, out of the eye. Van, touchdown. Boy, what a nice cut. Got the football, didn't see anything to the outside, and they just cut up into the middle for an easy six. We've talked about it a lot, Chris. Uh, rely on, the, on, the, on your strengths all the time. Your strength right now is clearly your offensive line across the board. They're moving a smaller App State D line around, and, mm -hmm. and while while the speed can be an equalizer, that power up front right now, Montana's taking advantage of. Really starting to dominate now in the line of scrimmage as Lider's on for the extra point. Warren will hold, and this time he splits it. 4.30 to go in the first half. Montana ups the lead to 13 to nothing, and we're back after these words from your local stations. in part by the Montana Honda Association. Visit your local Honda dealer. Billings Hotel and Convention Center, the one with the water slides. Wendy's, now that's better. And by Payne West Insurance. Clients, colleagues, community. And your Ford scoring drive, nine plays, 82 yards. They took 437 off the clock and it was capped off by the two yard run by Trayvon Van, who in the matter of one half of football has probably become a crowd favorite. Trayvon Van, a, a transfer from Marshall. In 2011, he was the second leading rusher for Marshall with 143 carries, 551 yards. He's pretty good. Certainly showing that he's, he's got the ability to do it at this level. All right, so Montana. Inside the 20-yard line, Bethard can't get it over the 20. And once again, the Mountaineers with miserable field position to start this drive. Here's the numbers so far. And you can see uh, Montana clearly dominating 266 total yards to just 80. If you take away that first drive by Appalachian State, John, where they look pretty good. Uh, haven't been able to do much since then. Well, Chris, you look there, the, the third down conversions and the situation that App State has found themselves in in third down is the key to this game so far. Jackson will hand it off. Ferguson gets the carry, but not much there. 
Tyrone Holmes on the tackle on the inside. Some of Montana's inside players coming around from the backside, really relying on, again, kind of like their offensive line. These guys, these guys on the inside, Tyrone Holmes, five sacks in 2012 in one start last year. So nice to see a younger guy coming up and contributing. Second and nine. Jackson fires out there in a flat, incomplete intended for Washington. Good coverage out there by Anthony Goodwin to bring up third down. Laundry Jackson showing his arm strength there, boy. You can really see he sets into this and has some, some nice whip on it, a little high, probably a catchable ball. And again, here we find ourselves, if you're an App State fan and an and, and App State coaching staff in third and long, backed up in your own in your own end zone. Well, here we go. Third and nine for the Mountaineers. Jackson pulls it down. He's got some running room up over the 20. The 25 falls forward to the 30, and that's a first down. Nice third down conversion as there was absolutely nobody to throw it to, John, and able to bring that football down and convert on the first down. Well, Chris, you and I talked about it in the in the intro is the, his dual threat ability. Yeah. And this is exactly the exactly the kind of thing as Montana, you're staying back, you're staying conservative on defense, but then somebody like that just comes in and kills you. So first down from the 30. Up, oh, ball's mishandled and then recovered. Well, that was just an ill-conceived play right from the snap. Bieneman was in there almost about the same time the ball got secured by the Mountaineers, and they're lucky not to turn one over there. Yeah, Ferguson did a nice job just able to keep that ball from being turned over. Second and 13 now from the 27. The Mountaineers have been facing a whole lot of this tonight. Second and long, third and long. And a pass out for Washington at the 45 yard line is incomplete. And Cameron Bryant in at quarterback on that last play. He'll come back out. We're just repeating, repeating ourselves here to, uh, these these positions the, the percentages when you're third and long like this in a game like this they go down so much of having any success uh, particularly when they're one and five on third down conversions they got the last one so two and six now but again there's not that many plays in the playbook to help you right. get this and that's going to be a false start now that's the second one we've seen tonight and Big assist to the north end zone again. Five yard penalty, still third down. Well, the Mountaineers are used to, they've got a, a, a nice home crowd and, and they've they've played, I saw some quotes from the players, they've played at Virginia Tech and, and all over and said this is definitely one of the hardest places it is to come yeah. in and, and play. No and question about it. Laundry Jackson there might have been a reason he was out for a play. Looked like Kanagata got a pretty good shot on his knee. So now a third and 18 from the 22. Laundry Jackson coughs it up, balls on the ground. And he falls on it, but the loss is back to the 17 yard line, brings up fourth down. Well, that was not a pretty series. The Mountaineer coaching right staff just has to, has to be going out. nuts. I mean, that series, that series right there just yeah, put it back in the hole, out. the same hole that we've out. talked about all day, not even from a not even from a production standpoint, but a field position standpoint. Please even if you picked up one two or minutes. two, one or two first downs, get yourself into halftime, uh, you know, down 13, not a big deal. Here you're gonna be punting the ball away from the 16 yard line and give Montana 215 to do something with it. Well, it's going to be fourth and 24 from the 16-yard line. Of course, as you know, John, there have been some new rules changes, and 
all designed to protect the players. And it's that targeting rule now. If you target the, a player with that helmet, um, it, for, it, 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 what it amounts to is an ejection from the game. If it happens in the first half, you're ejected for the second half of the game. If it happens in the second half, then you're ejected for the first Switch half the of the following game. It's a, it's a good rule, Chris. I mean, we've seen all, all the things that are coming out now with, with mm. concussions and all these different things. It's a great sport. Whoa, block. Kick is blocked. And Montana recovers on the 12-yard line. Oh, man, what a big play by the Montana special teams. Look at this pressure up the middle. Exactly what the Mountaineers could not afford to do at this time. We were, we were just commenting how, how hard it was going to be for him to punt the thing away. But here, now you turned it over on the turned it over on the 14. Crittenden is the one that blocked it. Nice vertical yeah. for a, a big guy right there. Yeah. Montana's offense so far. That's pretty impressive. Good balance between running and passing. Five of six on third down conversions. You alluded to that, John. And 11-11 for yeah. 157. I mean, let, just a real balanced attack. You know, we mentioned earlier how this dual coordinator thing would work out. It appears right now that hey. it's working pretty good. Timeout, Montana. Their final timeout. So Montana will take their final time out of the first half leading 13 to nothing well when when i was starting to 30 seconds look at, time out to look at the montana offense and they talked about going back to that pro style set and it reminded me so much of coach halk when bobby was here and how they would dominate teams with the run and use clock and just grind and grind and grind and this team seems very reminiscent of that it all starts with that huge offensive line you get your running backs that aren't afraid to slam it up in there and then you you bring in you, you know, you bring in the pass when the linebackers come in to stop the run. You saw what they did, yep. went right over the top and hit Nacarado because they're all playing run stop. No, I agree with you. You know, and it, it really was that transition from you know, back in the day when you were talking about Coach Dennehy uh, in, the, in the late late 90s when Joe Glenn came here. And you had the Brian Ayotts, uh, you know, still following the Dave Dickinson kind of thing mm -hmm. where they're throwing the ball 50, 60 times a, a game. When Joe came here, you know, Joe's a... Joe was a very old school coach, and, and the way he looked at the game was ball control, field yep. possession, and turnovers, and, and how ran it all along, too. So here's Johnson. He's got a man wide open at the 10-yard line down inside the five, and then somersaults out of bounds, but a nice catch by Mitch Saylor, and Saylor gets it down inside the five, and... It's like somebody along the sideline may have got shaken up a little bit. Well, Mitch Saylor, 6'5", 222 pounds out of Vancouver, Washington, kind of got upended over there. Well, that's a, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. I, in, you know, talking about this kind of ball control offense, and I know when you played here as a quarterback, you weren't a guy that was going to chuck it 40 times. No, it's, it's the exact same kind of thing. We yeah. had running backs like Johansi Humphrey right. and, uh, you know, fullbacks like Spencer Frederick and, and, and certain people where, you, again, you realize what your, you know, who, who the guys are, who your players are and who you want to utilize. And, you know, we had a, a couple of, of professional quality O-linemen, uh, Dylan McFarland, uh, people like that, that, uh, hey, you, you you get in that position and you let the big guys do the work and and lean on them. Carl Anderson shaking up on the play, but he'll come off under his own steam. We've seen him around the field all night. He's been buzzing around, making plays all night. Hopefully that's just a stinger and he can get yep. back at it. Well, this would be. This would be tough for Appalachian State right now to give up a touchdown with two minutes to go in the half. 13 to nothing, you're in the game. You go in the locker room and you regroup. You go down, you go down three scores and it's gonna make it decidedly tougher. Especially when you're playing a team that's gonna come out in the second half and you're gonna see a steady diet of running the football. Yep. So second and one from the four yard line, they can still get a first down. 
Oh, and they got a lot more to cover now as that was just a great defensive play. Jordan Canada taken down for the loss. Steven Burns out of Taylorsville, North Carolina, 6'2", 280. Just split the double team here. Yep. See how beautiful play that is. These D linemen, it's amazing. You know, we, we don't get to see how much goes on in, inside those, uh, inside the trenches there, but they get the feel of when they're getting double teamed and, and, and get a hand in there and split. That was a great play. Third and four from the seven. Johnson rolls. Got all kinds of time and now throws it away. Good coverage by the Mountaineers in their backfield. There just wasn't anyone to throw to, and this is going to bring on Chris Leiter. Coach Delaney's been pretty vocal about the consistency of the place kicking this uh, this fall. The competition was open, uh, in fact, uh, is still open, he says, although Leiter's, Leiter's going to be the guy. And uh, I think his frustration got to the point where, where Coach Delaney had to remove himself from any of the coaching <laughs> and let his special teams coaches do the work. This will be from 25 yards straight away for Leiter. Ball's down cleanly, plenty of leg and good. So with 1.10 to go in the first half, the Grizz up the lead to 16 to nothing over Appalachian State, the sophomore from Bellevue, Washington. No doubt about that one as he split the uprights and three more for Montana. And sometimes it's like any other position in the field. Sometimes that's all you need is a little confidence builder like that to boom one through and get good contact and, uh, you know, start your season. Like you said, he was a little inconsistent last year, but the only way you get better is kicking field goals during games, and, yep. and that's, the, that's the hard part about it. This game in no way reflects the way these two teams played last year. I mean, last year there was all kinds of offensive fireworks and high-scoring game, but to not so much this time around. Well, it's the opposite of what we actually expected. We kind of thought uh, App State's offense is looking, uh, you know, they come into yeah. the game uh, with the with the senior quarterback that's uh, throwing all kinds of numbers up and, and, and playing very well with a Montana defense that was torched last year by teams such as this. Uh, their offense hasn't been able to put up any points on the board. And on the flip side of it, Montana's offense, nobody knew what to expect out of them either. And they had their defense that, w that, that, that was loaded. So here it, it's been flipped on its head, not what you expected, but clearly a different brand of, of ball by Montana. All right, so Appalachian State will feel Washington fields it at the five, and he's going to be taken down inside the 20. He is whacked at the 15-yard line. That's the second kickoff in a row. Joey Koontz, the 5'9", 215 running back from Mesa, Arizona, has come down, and he's, <laughs> he's the guy that here he comes. We're going to get to see it again right there and that's his job his job is to go down there and blow that thing up not necessarily make the tackle it's to blow that thing up and some guys like it and some guys don't well special teams it's a way to get on the field if you're not going to make it as a position player. You bet. and they can do a lot of good things all right here's laundry jackson with a screenplay and this one's going nowhere ferguson trying to make something out of nothing but doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage Kanagata out there on coverage right there. Montana clearly recognizing this is a position. It looks like the Mountaineers are comfortable getting out of the half here. Just hemming it in on the inside, pushing back and let the let the team come and rally to you. Under 40 seconds to go in quarter number two. Jackson steps up, fires, got Washington wide open at the 40 to the 45. And up to midfield as Washington does a nice job running the football after the catch. Coach Gregorak's going to want to have that one back. That's the first time I've seen Montana roll coverage all night. They rolled the safety down on the strong side of the field, and they snuck that post in right behind him. And this is complete to the 35-yard line. And a new quarterback in for Appalachian State is Cameron Bryant comes up with the pass and completion. Third second timeout, 30 seconds timeout. So a timeout by Appalachian State. They've got the football down to the 31 yard line with 10 seconds remaining. They still have a timeout. 
Bryant with a nice job throwing back across the body there. And you bet. It's a good catch. Well, it well, kind of gives everybody, the fans here, the idea how quickly App State could get down the field if they want to, which they've been unable to so far, but that's the scary thing. And here's Bryant, just a sophomore out of Cary, North Carolina. Well, this is, this is significant, John, because if the Mountaineers can get a field goal, come out, then they get it under a two-possession game, and they got a little momentum coming out in the third quarter. That's always fun to see how these ends, you know, the end of these halves really play out, because here, here we were a minute and a half ago sitting down looking at Montana, staring down, looked like it was going to be a for sure another touchdown. Mm -hmm. uh, three points out of it, uh, quick turn of events, and, and here... The Mountaineers have got themselves an opportunity maybe just to get some points on the board. So here's Brian out of the gun. Rolls right. Now throws incomplete at the 20-yard line. Uh, you could tell what they were trying to do was just get a little more yardage and in position for a field goal. Incomplete pass will stop the clock, and the field goal unit's going to come on. Good call by... Coach Gregorak there, he went to what uh, just a classic cover two was, was where your, your corners roll down, your safeties have both halves of the field, and the idea of cover two is to stop the short. Mm -hmm. the, the corners roll down real tight on the outside, and, and they did a good job knowing that App, App State was going to run that. 48-yard field goal attempt by Drew Stewart from the left hash. Kick on its way, and this is good. 48-yard field goal with time running out in the second quarter has Appalachian State on the board. Would have been good from 60. That yeah. thing was still on the rise going through. So Appalachian State with a little something positive to take to the locker room. They still trail 16-3 to after two quarters of play. Well, that just shows you how dangerous they can be, how quick they can strike. And Absolutely. Mo Montana was able to keep the net on them for the first, for the first qu quarter and a quarter and a half, and here at the end, just let them in. Let's go down on the field and join Sean Rainey. All right, guys, I'm joined by head coach Mick Delaney. Coach, talk about, you know, Jordan Johnson and how the offense played in the first half. Well, offensively, you know, we had a great half. Uh, failed, to, you know, to get a couple scores on the board. I think we had a 16-play drive and a, I'm sorry, a 14-play drive and a 12 without points. So, you know, we're executing well on offense. We're playing big time on defense. And, you know, we, we just got to come out. We got the ball in the second half and continue to do what we're doing, not lose that enthusiasm and, you know, go, go, go. Uh, apparently they changed quarterbacks because this kid maybe throws the ball a little bit better and you know so we got to be ready for him to start throwing the football it looks like you guys give up a late field goal but you got to be you know pretty pleased with how the defensive unit played oh the defense has played great you know you'd like not to have that but you know that's that's the way it goes some days we're fine all right thanks coach yeah. we'll have right back we'll have more with the Wendy's halftime report in just a bit And welcome to the Wendy's Halftime Report here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Montana leads over Appalachian State 16 to three after two quarters of football. And John, uh, most impressive effort, I, the, the Grizz on really both sides of the football. It really, it, it's, it's been a, a really solid first half. I think, you know, number eight Van has been yeah. a real, uh, I, I'm, I know they were high on him, and I know people were talking good about it. Good as advertised? It. Yeah, good as advertised, exactly. It's, it's been really impressive to watch. And 
that's really got to make Montana feel pretty good, not having to rely solely on Jordan Johnson and a pretty thin running back. Well, and he's the, he's the beneficiary of that running game. Yep. Because Jordan, and you know as a quarterback, when you got it going in the running game, all of a sudden that play action looks pretty good and oh. able to throw that football. Like you say, as we saw on the streaking down the, the, the side of the field, all off play action, no doubt about it. So the halftime numbers clearly in favor of Montana in this game as we take a look at it. And John, what's, when you look at those numbers, what sticks out the most to you? Third down conversions, yeah. two and seven and five and uh, five and seven. It, uh, time and possession is a big one, but that just kind of is, is more how Montana and the balance on the, on the pass and the rush, it, I think really tells that this co-offensive coordinator thing seems to be working pretty good and, and, and they must be getting along doing it because that's, it's, it's perfectly balanced. All right, so the Wendy's halftime report continues. 16-3, your score with Montana on top. I'm Sean, I'm Sean Rainey, joined by Jeff Butler. Jeff is an assistant strength coach with Montana. He joined him in January, and he has some connections with this game as he used to play for App State. So Jeff, I gotta put you on the spot. Who are you going for in this game? Uh, you know, a few months ago back in January when I got here, it might have been tough, but, you know, I've worked alongside these guys day in, day out. Their work ethic, their characters really won me over, so, you know, I believe I'm a Montana Grizzly today. You know, both of these programs are known for having, you know, great reputation re reputation and success. You know, kind of just talk about what, what you've seen from App State and Montana when it comes to reputation. Well, I mean, this is obviously this is a huge game, kind of center stage, uh, but it's a situation both teams have been in many times before. So it's it's kind of nice to see that both teams are playing pretty well and that, you know, there's a lot of mutual respect on the field. The guys are playing hard, but, you know, helping each other up afterwards, patting on the back. It's a good game to see. And this is your first game in Washington Grizzly Stadium. So how did it, how does it com compare to Kid Brewer? I mean, again, both great, great venues. Um, amazing fans, uh, both really intense, but it feels like the entire state's here right now. And I think during the second quarter, the fans were getting to uh, Appalachian a little bit. You kind of see they were having some difficulty getting the signals in and out. And you're a man of many connections. You actually know the new UM softball coach, Jamie Pinkerton. Let's talk about that. Uh, so I did my graduate degree at the University of Arkansas, and I went to school with several of his former players that played softball for him. Uh, so as soon as I heard he had the hire, I called a couple of them up. Nothing but great things to say. Great recruiter, great person to play for. Um, they said he's going to be a real positive role. They think he's a great guy to start the program. So Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. We'll have much more on the Wendy's Halftime Report coming up after the break. And welcome back to the Wendy's Halftime Report. John Edwards, Chris Byers, bringing you tonight's game. And, uh, John, it's been a lot of fun if you're a Grizz fan. Uh, great environment here under the lights at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Not an empty seat in the house for this 2013 home opener. And uh, fans were treated to a, a very, very good first half, as we've talked about. And, boy, you just look at the numbers for Montana, and it's so consistent. You know, good numbers running. Uh, th you mentioned the third down conversions, which is amazing. We take one more look at the stats and uh, domination and then look at time of possession as well. We didn't talk about that, John, but nearly 19 minutes Grizz held the football in the first half. Yeah, Chris, you know, the other thing that doesn't show up there is that field position you and I talked quite a bit about uh, in the first half, and it really does make yeah. a difference, particularly if you're running an offense the way Montana is running the ball. Field position is huge in that uh, in that instance. And you, and you get the feeling that while Montana has, has controlled the game, you just get the feeling the Mountaineers have that firepower and those big play guys that at any moment Quick play here, quick play there. They can get right back in this game. Yeah, and, and Coach Delaney hit on it a little bit right before he went into the locker room. It would have been nice to get a couple of that points, and you and I talked about it on on those big drives. It would have been nice to have a couple of those points because you're dealing with a very dangerous Appalachian State. Team. No question. We'll be back with more on the Wendy's Halftime Report from Missoula. The Wendy's Halftime Report here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. 16 to three, your score, Montana leading Appalachian State in an early battle of nationally ranked programs. The Mountaineers preseason pick number 12 in the country. Montana preseason pick 20th in the country. But right now you can flip that as we take a look at what has been a just a beautiful evening for football here and dominated by Montana, really, John, on both sides of the football. Yeah, App State uh, unfortunately missed that field goal early. That would have been a nice momentum uh, starter for him because things then just got worse. Montana's running attack 
was a big, big influence in that first half. Well, and that's it right there. That encapsulates the first half is the running of Trayvon Ban, and this was just a nice cutback run here. And then a little trouble for Montana. They were knocking on the door. A little Jordan Johnson coughed it up. They came away empty. About the only mistake that Jordan Johnson made. Here's Laundry Jones. The defense was just all over the field. Big play right here as Jordan Johnson goes up top and finds Ellis Henderson. And then later, that would lead to a touchdown as Johnson goes across the middle, hooks up with Henderson again, who had a very nice first half. And Johnson is nearly perfect on this first half, and that's what's so fun to watch. Is somebody coming back, you've had a year off, and it, all the things that Jordan Johnson's been through in the offseason to come back and, and play composed. Special teams coming up big for Montana as they block the punt there. And then here at the end of the half, Mountaineers finally got something going. Is Here's the backup quarterback. And that was a completed pass that set up what would turn out to be the first points of the night for Appalachian State as they would capitalize on a 48-yard field goal from there. And that came right as time expired at the end of the second quarter. So 16-3 to is where we stand. And I, I think, John, as a former player, you can almost hear the conversation in the Montana locker room, can't you, about what do we want to do in the second half? Yeah, don't, don't let this team back in yeah. this game is what they're talking right. about. It's saying you guys played a real complete first half. You need to play the exact same second half because you let a team like this with this many weapons slide back in the back door uh, you know that first half flipped and flopped a little bit and uh, you know the last three minutes let them in the door well yeah and then this is what this is what they're going to build their offense around is this this hard running inside the tackles a big offensive line grounded pound take time off the clock and if they can do this if they can do that same type of thing in the in the second half I think they're in for a, a what'll be a pretty good opening night evening for them oh I'd, I'd agree a hundred percent you know, the one thing you do have to be careful with, and, and, and when we talked about it with the field position game, is that running the ball doesn't work so well if you got yourself in bad positions on third and long and things like that. That's why first, second down, if you're running the ball, are very, very important. Absolutely. Now, we saw Cameron Bryan into the game that engineered that last drive for Appalachian State, and he did see some time in the second quarter. Now, the starting quarterback, of course, is Laundry Jackson, and here he is on this play right here. And right at the end of the play, it looks like he... Kind of takes a sh right there on the head, came out after that, so we don't really know if maybe he just got a little shook up or got his bell rung, or but you can see there he's looks uh, like he got maybe a little disoriented right there. But let's go down on the field and join Sean Rainey. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Satterfield. Coach, you guys kind of slow out of the gates, but you're only down 13. So what do you guys have to do, you know, to get back in this game? Well, we got to get something going on offense. I mean, we we've. Kind of sputtered around a little bit out there. The opening drive, we moved the ball and came down and missed a field goal. But other than that, the last drive was a good positive note. We got to continue to do what we did the last drive, spread them out. When they, when they give us the pass, we got to take it. But we got to establish the run game. That's the main thing for us offensively. And then will we see, you know, Jamal Andrew Jackson in the second half? What, what happened with him? Yeah, he just got a little stinger on his left arm. I think he's going to be fine. Uh, we should be able to see him in the second half. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, All right back up to you guys. So there it is. Uh, we get the official word <laughs> from the coach. He got a little stinger there on the shoulder, but uh, it appears, though, that he will come back. And that you just heard from Scott Satterfield. He was named the head coach of Appalachian State, John, back on December 14th, replaced Jerry Moore, who has been the coach there for 24 years, really a coaching icon in the FCS. And this, as we've talked about, will be their final season in the FCS before they move to the Sun Belt next year along with Georgia Southern and it's ironic because Georgia Southern and App State are picked one and two in the conference this year in the FCS and yet they will not be able to participate in the playoffs and when you look at those two programs John that's 11 national championships leaving the FCS and it and it does beg the question where is the FCS going that's an it, it's a very interesting yeah. question is it a trickle down you know where, where, when the when the chips start to fall d does it all come down or is it more of just an aberration with a handful of schools you know I think it's all going to depend on what what these schools do because these are very quality programs in highly populated areas that have good fans and good followings mm -hmm. and you know, if, if they make the transition and, and they're successful at it, you could you could see that that happen yeah. where, where it is a, a trickle down and more schools try to try to get into it. You know, the reverse of that is, though, that we have real when you look at the top two in that conference, that conference is always in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. And the and the level of, uh, of play is is fantastic. And you certainly wouldn't want to see the FCS lose that that high level of competition and I you know I've been following the uh, FCS football for a long long time John and that 
it just from my perspective and I know it's a slanted one but there's nothing like the playoff structure that the FCS has it's unlike any other division in football and I think it's what makes it so special couldn't agree with you more all right Henderson will take it from the end zone up over the 15 falls forward to the 29 or to the 19 rather so Montana has the football to open this third quarter all right let's talk about x's and o's here in the third quarter john montana has the football how big is it for them right now to have come out and reestablish that ground game and on the other side of the ball how important for appalachian state to force a three and out yeah we, these are real difficult circumstances uh you know particularly in washington grizzly stadium you can see the the place is at least maybe halfway full right now people mm -hmm. still out having some libations and doing what imagine they, that yeah imagine <laughs> that and doing what they do you come out it's hard to it's hard to get amped up and it's hard yeah. to get going again it's a you know i think a, a good time to to rely on your on your solid quality players so jordan johnson comes out firing on first down and that's complete up to the 25 yard line nice play nothing fancy as jones just catches it out there in the flat and picks up an easy five. That's something that we we commented early in the second or in the Good first block. half that we haven't talked about here is we we have spread the ball around uh, Montana that that is has spread the ball around to all these young wideouts that we really don't know anything about. Seems like they're playing, getting open in space and catching the football. Stay on the ground, Trayvon Van. Oh, check that. That was Jordan Canada with the carry on second and five. So Canada and Van have split time running the football. Both have been very effective. Essential to have two backs yeah. that you rely on, that know the system and you're comfortable with because when you're running the ball, particularly that many times they were in the first half and running as hard, you are not going to have one guy that can withstand that kind of, you know, that kind of punishment. Uh, and Canada's more than used to that. They, they had a three running back set ran by committee last year, as you mentioned with Wynn and with uh, Dan Moore. So this is nothing new. Third and two, Johnson incomplete. And so the Mountaineers do exactly what they'd hoped to. They force a three and out. And Montana will kick the football away. Yeah, Coach Satterfield has to feel great about yeah. that start. That, that's exactly what needed to happen. Get back in this game. Field position's not going to turn. You're going to probably have yourself, you know, somewhere between 20 and, and, and the 35 yard line here uh, on, the, on the receiving of the punt. Where you're not backed up and having to call plays to get you out and just allow you to get a punt off, you can actually start running your offense again. Stephen Shaw will do the kicking for Montana, stands at his 10 yard line. And Tony Washington back to receive. Nine yards a punt return for Washington. So let's see what he can do here. End over end kick. Washington's going to have a chance. Fields it at the 25. Avoids one tackle. Still on his feet, but finally taken down at the 23. And that's just great contained by the Montana special teams. Denard cleans it up for Montana. Nice job, like you say, of Denard containing it and letting the inside come in. You'll see Kanagata come, stays with it, stays with it, stays with it. And there's containment there for him to come up and trip him up. John Paul playing pretty good on special teams. He is, and you know, as a guy that's been out there that long, surprising <laughs> to see him out there, but. It's it's all about uh, it's all about helping your team. Well, let's see if Appalachian State can swing the pendulum to their side on that momentum as they have the football straight ahead running up over the 25 and getting the start in the second half as Cameron Bryant. Now Satterfield did say that Laundry Jackson would play most li most likely play in the second half, but he's not in right now. You know, as a, as a head coach, and I'm certainly not suggesting that this is what he's doing, but right now, Bryant kind of led him that, yeah. that last series. And if you got a guy working for you, go for it. Ferguson up to the 29. Well, it's, gonna, it's, it's clear, too, what, what Coach Satterfield said. He wants to run the ball. Yeah. They've had two real positive running plays. That, that they're going to try to get back in their game plan of what they meant to do when they came out in that first, that first half. Third and four from the 29. Ferguson, 19 yards. That's it on just seven carries. Looks now, fires has Washington and a first down and then some all the way up over midfield and down to the 45 of Montana. Well executed play as Bryant 
throws to Washington coming across the middle, and then he did the rest with his feet after the catch. Yeah, perfect call. Kind of a double layer. You, ha you have two crossing patterns, just enough to separate those linebackers, and the, and the linebacker has to pick one of them. Nice job by Bryant, obviously finding the one that, that yeah. was open and hit him in stride. Well, John, I think you're right. I think they just are going with Bryant because he was the hot hand at the end of the second quarter. So a first down now is the Appalachian State in Grizz territory. And again, Ferguson spins out of a tackle. Some running room to the 30, to the 25, still on his feet down to the 20-yard line. Wow, what a great run by Ferguson. And just like that, here comes Appalachian State. Ferguson breaking all kinds of tackles. One thing Montana's known for. Now we just saw there was the first time Montana's getting gashed in the run right here. They started rolling safeties down to help, and Ferguson ran through two tackles. Flag on the play. Flag coming in right at the snap. Offside, defense, number 91, five yard penalty, still first down. So Holmes jumps offside and that'll move the Mountaineers closer. Well, you like your options, don't you, John, when, you, when you're looking at a first and five, because you can do, you can do a whole lot. Yeah, from the 15-yard line, it's, it's, it's a position they haven't been in all game, yeah. frankly. They'll stay on the ground. Oh, Ferguson's got a big hole to run through. Cuts it up inside the 10, down to the five, and a first down for the Mountaineers. Ferguson, 5'8", 182. He's running like he's 6'2", and 215 really spreading Montana's defense out here. You can see the holes are big and they're just getting a little bit of movement left to right to create those holes. And Ferguson's quick enough to just pounce right in them. Here we go. As Ferguson takes it down very close to the goal line, they're gonna spot him just inches from the goal. So and Ferguson's not the biggest guy out there, but man, he can lower the shoulder and get it done. Well, we talked about it. We really haven't mentioned it much because Montana's defense dominated yeah. so much. Oh, and this time Ferguson's hitting the backfield. And a big play for Montana's defense. Wagonman slicing in and drops him behind the line of scrimmage. And that's what we were talking about. Takai not in there. One of the big fellas up front not playing this game. And we didn't mention it because there really wasn't any reason to. Wagonman now kind of took it on his own. Like you said, sliced in, got a great little cut and made a big time tackle. Third and goal from the three. Bryant out of the gun. Now looks, end zone, this one's batted up in the air and incomplete. And Bryant had a touchdown. They had a little play action pass and got Drew ba Bailey out in the flat here and had a touchdown. If they didn't get a hand on it, would have been six points. Offside, defense, number 14. Oh boy. Half the distance to the goal, third down. Wow. So Denard called for the offsides. That would have been a fourth down. That would have been interesting to see if they would have gone for it, but now they're gonna get another shot at it. And ladies and gentlemen, Denard's a cornerback. That means that he's lined up right in front of the linesman yeah. one on one and got right over the line, clearly. It's a call you don't see that often. No. All right, third and one. Ball's on the one yard line. Ferguson in the backfield. He's got it, he stopped. No chance at all for Ferguson to get into the end zone as he's dropped at the five yard line. Alex Bieteman just slices in here. Big time play again, missed the double team on the left side. We could barely see it real quick. He's missed the double team, slipped underneath and makes a big stop. Boy, that is huge. That is a huge stop for Montana. Now they're gonna have to settle for a field goal attempt. And Stewart's on. This mounts to a little more than an extra point. From the 10 yard line, it's up and good. So Appalachian State now six unanswered points going back to the second quarter. 16 to six our score. Back after these words from your local stations, you're watching Big Sky Game Day. Michael Frazier 
out of Conway, South Carolina, a senior, that last drive for Arizona State. Nine plays, 73 yards. Sean? Yeah, you guys might remember in 2009 when these guys played in the epic national semifinal, the only guy on the App State roster is Michael Frazier, number 42, that played in that game. And the Mountaineer teammates asking him kind of what it's going to be like coming out to Missoula and playing in Washington Grizzly Stadium. He said, loud, and their fans are awesome. He said, except for a couple that threw some snowballs at him during that game. <laughs> Chris? Yeah, no threat of that happening tonight, John. There will <laughs> be God. no snowballs coming out of the stadium. I remember watching that game, and you and I were talking about it uh, the last time these two teams met, and it was in the national semifinals. And it was snowing so hard that you literally couldn't see the game. You could, couldn't see some of the plays on TV because there was so much snow coming down. And you and I also talked about that we were happy to be watching it from you covering the NFR in Las, in Vegas, Las Vegas, and I was right. there watching it. <laughs> so you and I were sitting there in a 65 degree weather watching it here, and it was uh, it was wonderful. What a great scene, what two great teams and great programs. Well, it was so much fun uh, to watch that game, and it came right down to the wire. It was a broken play. But Van is able to bring it down and get positive yards. Now, I don't know how he did that. I'm not sure how they even got the ball to each other. Don't know who messed up there, but you can see Van, it's fun to watch him because he's uh -huh. got kind of that, that little lazy step and, and shake there. And you see him, he uses it twice here. Once, there right again, there. Yep. that little dead leg on the inside and uses it very effectively. Uh, you're right, he is fun to watch. And somehow he managed to get nine yards on that play. So second and one, now he takes it on the deep pitch, gets whacked, stays, falls forward, first down to the 35. Well, that's what I mean. This guy just does not go down on the first hit. No, and that's, and, and he's got App State frustrated. You, big old Jesse Jin there, 6'5", 298. Or I'm sorry, Stephen Burns misses him and uh, didn't get it done. So the numbers on Van as he closes in on 100 yards, 15 rushes for 95. We talked about this the last time they, these two played in the national semifinals. That's one of t twice they've met in the national semifinals. Grizz winning both of those games. So first down now to the 35. Boy, not much there that time. As Jordan Canada is wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage, and now we got a little extracurricular again. Jordan Canada saying I'm not going to be outdone with nifty moves and just ran out of players and see what the 72 offense 15 yard penalty for first down. Well all of a sudden Montana getting flagged for penalties and it goes second down went against Trevor Poole the big guard one of those big guys up front for Montana well, he's hearing it from the sidelines. Both teams have exchanged personal fouls and, and, and critical. We saw Law on the corner on the on the catch and run and mm -hmm. on the horse collar. And now this gives you a, a second and 24. You know, try to eat up something here and give yourself a manageable third down. Yeah. Two receivers set to the right. Johnson. Now on the delayed give and not much there. No gain at all, so it's going to be third and long. Nice stop there by Gilchrist, the outside linebacker. You watch it again. And that play's just stoned in the backfield. Oh, Gilchrist played it perfectly, you know, on those draw, those D linemen are tight. You get upfield and you start feeling that draw is coming. Roll backwards and try to roll yourself into the play. That's exactly what he did. Third and 24 now from the 21 yard line. Canada's got some running room, takes it up over the 30. So a little better field position for Montana now as they will kick it away from the 30 yard line. Hell App State has to be very happy oh, yeah. with, with both series here and get Montana again. It's not gonna be bad field position. He doesn't get Montana, get him rolling. Well, and momentum clearly right now on the side of Appalachian State. And, and you know John is a player that uh, momentum means an awful lot in a football game. It's everything, and it's, it's funny, you and I talked about it when it came out. It is, look at that beauty. Wow. Washington driven back to the 15. Got a chance to some running room to the 25. Looked like he might get a little bit more, but tripped up right at the door, and he knows it too. Tripped up at the 25. 
7.01 to go in the third quarter, 16-6 your score. And we're back after these words from your local stations. Cameron Bryant is now the quarterback for Appalachian State, came in in the second quarter. The word is on Laundry Jackson that he suffered an upper body injury in that second quarter and his return is questionable. But in his absence, Cameron Bryant's been pretty good. Four of six through the air in tonight's game for 80 yards. And he was particularly impressive at the end of the second quarter and this first drive of the third quarter. Yeah, he's moved the ball more effectively than Laundry uh, Jackson and you gotta go who's getting it done. Mountaineers taking a page out of the Montana playbook and content to stay on the ground, establish the running game. That was Marcus Cox, just a freshman. Just a gain of one on the play, so second and nine from the 27. Winding down to the 6.30 mark here in quarter number three. Bryant this time will work out of the gun. Now he looks, crossed the middle, has a man wide open. And that's a first down up to the 40 yard line as Cox sneaks out of the backfield, makes the catch and moves the chains. Well done by Bryant here, recognizing Montana in a, uh, that cover two defense we were talking about earlier. Cover two requires the middle linebacker to get very deep in the coverage. He's almost got responsible for that part of it and the down underneath him is wide open. And Cox again, or check that, I believe that was Washington this time, and it was. Washington with the nice run, gain of nine on the play, second and one. Looks like it was Jordan yeah. Tripp, lucky to get him tripped up right here before he had a... Whoa. That was a nice move by Washington. Second and one as the ball is on the 48. Three receivers set to the left. Bryant. Straight drop, throws right, has got a man at midfield. First down, I believe, yeah, he's got it to the 49. So Marcus Cox, just enough after the catch to get the first down. You can see he's got to get over, right over the 45, or the 50 rather, and does just that. And another first down for Appalachian State at the 49. We talked about Goodwin in the opening too. We haven't had to talk about him much because Montana's front seven is dominating that early. This run game is really allow allowing App State now to open up the playbook. Much different field of this game now, and Bryant loses the football, but alertly falls on it, and it's gonna cost him a down. Well, this, this kid's showing some real poise coming in here to Washington Grizzly Stadium Certainly didn't think he would probably see any playing time tonight, and all of a sudden, he's the guy running the offense. It's funny how that happens from time to time when you've got a couple of good quarterbacks and somebody just gets hot, somebody's, for whatever reason, moving the team more than anybody else, and let it happen. Loss of three makes it second and 13. Watch the quarterback draw here. You yep. Wide open in the middle of the field. There's Bryant. Going to throw across the middle, and it's caught at the 35. So again, a nice job as Jones comes down with it in a first down. I believe that's the first catch of the night for Jones, and it's a big one. Boy, there is a lot open, John, right over the middle, and they're finding it. Here's Cox, and Cox, man, oh, man, that's some good hard running there inside the 20 five-yard line and another first down. Montana really on their heels right now. App State, you can see as much as they're changing, they're changing personnel back and forth. That, that play over the middle was Jones on Brock Coyle. That's a mismatch. No huddle offense. Here's Washington. And you can tell what they try to do with him, John, is they just want to get him the football in space and then let him make something happen. Absolutely. It really does come down to that one-on-one -on -one game. Flick it out there and let him do what he needs to do. I mean, you, you gotta have your athletes up against their athletes and whoever's better is gonna win it. Gain of four on the play, balls at the 19. Second and six for Bryant. Bryant, play action, fires across the middle and almost intercepted inside the five yard line. Brock Coyle, wish oh, he had that, that back, that was 
Yeah, that's, that's six points if he doesn't knock that down. It sure is. Yep. And that's his position on the field. That's right in his zone and in his drop. And job well done. I wish Betty wishes he had it back and would have held on to it. But like you say, that's better than six points, which I was guaranteed. Holding offense, number 54, 10 yard penalty, second down. So holding for Appalachian State will back them up now to the. Well, let's see where they mark it, but. Uh, that's a drive killer, John. When you, you start getting penalties in the red zone, takes them back to the 29-yard line. Well, and how fickle this game is. You go from three inches from having a touchdown to a holding call yep. and second down and, and 16. Here's Bryant. Fires out there. The flat incomplete for Ferguson. He was open at the 25, but just the football was not thrown there, and Ferguson unable to come up with it. It's going to bring up a long third and 16. Certainly the situation that Montana's more comfortable in there. That's the that's the sit back and let everything happen in front of you yep. go that they had so many times in the first half. Obviously, why App State's third down conversion percentage was so poor. Uh, that's when the defense is in control, not on their heels like they were the entire drive. Third down, Bryant, quarterback draw, he's got all kinds of running room to the 20. Down, fumbles the football at the 15. And squirting around down there, Montana has it, I believe, inside the five, and they do. Wow. Wow. Are you kidding me? That was a first down for Appalachian State, and Bryant coughed it up as he was hit at the 10. Uh, well, it, there's been miscues tonight. Take a look at this. It is the first game of the year, yeah. and this is when this kind of thing happens. I believe it was Jordan Tripp, number 37 from the backside with the, I don't know if he got the hand on it or there was a helmet up front, but what a break for Montana and what a heartbreaker yeah. for the Mountaineers. Bo Tully's the one that recovered the, I thought the ball was gonna be out of bounds. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're gonna have, it'll be first and goal from the two, but uh, Tully able to fall on it. And as you mentioned, that's a tough break for Appalachian State because they have put together an impressive drive. So Montana has the ball and immediately gets some working room as Canada takes it out to the 10 yard line. Well, before we leave that play, we got to give credit where credit is due. That was Hermanson putting the, the helmet on the football that caused that fumble. And that's just, it, it, it's perfect tackling. It's what you're taught, put that helmet directly on that football. And that's what got it done. Uh, what a tough break for the Mountaineers. I'll tell you what, they have played great football here in the third quarter. And we've got a long way to go in this game. Out of the eye formation. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard as this Mountaineer defense is really stiffened in the second half. And also, John, Appalachian State opening up the playbook a little more, don't you think? They were, were pretty conservative in the first half. I agree, and I, I think it has a lot to do with where they are on the field. I think it's the fact that they, they can open up their playbook when you're in the midfield range. So many times they found themselves with the field position on their on their back, mm -hmm. so they didn't have, they didn't feel comfortable letting it all open uh, and, you know, trying not to make a mistake. Third down and two for Montana. Johnson fires, has a man wide open at the 15. That's a first down for Montana as Jamal Jones makes the catch and that'll move the chains. A big conversion for Montana because up to this point, the Grizz pretty ineffective offensively here in the second half. Been anemic the, the second half and, and the, right there is a great job of Jordan Johnson sticking in the pocket, staying where you need to stay. Because it would have been easy right there to get a little get a little antsy and start moving around a little bit, but he did a nice job and delivered the pass. Johnson throws out there incomplete intended for Henderson. And this is the kind of game that you expect. You got two heavyweight programs. Combined they played for 10 national played in 10 national championship games. 
Appalachian State had that run of three in a row. The Grizz have won a couple. But more than that, they've been in championship games. They both have championship pedigree, their programs, and they're playing like it tonight. You know, you get down 16 to nothing, we're not out of this thing. We'll just come back and play harder in the second half, and it's tightened up. That's why you and I are so lucky to have this be the first game of the year. Absolutely. Yeah, and they... I think Mick Delaney said it best, and he, I think he was right on the money. He said, you can look at the schedule. This is the best game yeah. of the week, yeah. and they've got it here. And, and uh, boy, what a, what a treat to be able to watch two great programs go at it and uh, pretty evenly matched, too. Although I will say, I did think we were going to get a little more fireworks offensively, but I appreciate good defense, that, too. Absolutely. No, I think you and I both, we talked about it earlier, that was going to be. I mean, this is flip-flop for what we yeah. actually thought was going to happen. 900 yards of offense in last year's game at Kid Brewer Stadium. Here's a pass out the flat that's complete, but well short of the first down. Looked like Montana trying to run back yeah. there, the, the little slip screen that Dave Dickinson made famous back in, back in the mid-90s where you can see they got stuck on the outside there. The, the linemen actually release, and they're the guys that are downfield. It, it is a screen, and that, was, that play was way too quick to allow it to develop to let the big boys get out there. Montana used that for decades and used it well. So the Grizz will punt it away as Shaw will stand just inside his 20-yard line. And the ever-dangerous Washington back to receive. Token pressure. Going to try to set up some sort of a return here. Now Washington's going to let it bounce inside the 10. Oh, boy. How about that, huh? Ball bounces inside the 10-yard line, downed at the 7. Well, sh wow. Shaw's, Shaw's got to be the... The player in the second half that had the most impact on this game right now, he could have very easily the last two punts given App State great field position, and he's had two boomers that have really put him back. 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Montana on top, 16 to 6. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Montana Ford. Drive one at your Montana Ford store. CompareFord.com. Billings Hotel and Convention Center. The one with the water slides. And by Tyrama. More than just a tire store. Appalachian State backed up to the seven yard line and a first down trailing 16 to six. 29 ticks to go in quarter number three. And outside of one field goal, that's all the scoring in the second half. Here's Bryant's going to air one out, and this one is picked off at the 42-yard line. A huge defensive play, and I believe, yep, Bo Tully is the man that got it done. That was huge. Well, the ball under throwing. Bryant had it. It was a play action. You can see it right, fold out right in front of your eyes. Great job by Bo Tully sneaking a peek in the background and realizing that ball was under throwing the way it does. And you'll, you'll hear coaches talk about this all the time. It's called high point. You see where Boltoli went up and got that. He didn't let the ball come down to him. Right. He stopped and went up and got it. Well, he's just playing center field back exactly. there. And able to break on the ball. And football had enough air into it. And he was able to just run over and pick it up. His numbers tonight, four tackles. Recover, uh, recovered a fumble and now the interception. So Montana back to work from the 43. Here's Johnson, now he looks deep and he's got a man at the 25 yard line. So a big play for Montana on first down as they go to Jordan Harper, the backup tight end who makes the first down catch. Well, good catch here, Jordan Harper knowing that he's going to get whacked and does a nice job and holds on to the ball. He took a shot, good shot by App State there, making him, uh, making him earn the catch. Game is all the way down to the 25 and a first down. Trayvon Van, north and south running down to the 18 yard line. That's a gain of seven. Boy, you better load up the box if you want to stop him. Yeah, you know, the, the, the whole team's on him there. Patrick Blaylock from App State is the guy that kind of had him at the end. But he gives that dead leg, that little, that little one shake and then hits it, like you say, north and south running. Well, just think of the, the, the momentum shift. We'll talk about it when we come back with the, for the fourth quarter, but you've got Appalachian State down there 
threatening to go into score to make it a, a, a three-point game. Fumble the football, Montana comes back, now they get the interception, and they're back knocking on the door. So we've played three, 16-6 our score, and we're back with the final 15 minutes after these words from your local station. Okay. 6 our score, 16 to 6. Quarter. And we had highlights in the third quarter. We just didn't have a lot of scoring. Boy, that was what an exciting third quarter, though. The momentum flipped and flopped two or three yeah. different times. Fun to watch. And I think uh, after that last play, it's swinging back to Montana now as we begin the fourth quarter. If you're App State, you absolutely got to hold them to three here, I think, as Jordan gets pressure up the middle, now sets up the screen to Trayvon Van. Van cuts up inside of the 10, five, and ridden out of bounds. Man, is this kid exciting to watch. Well, great call upstairs. That's a great screen call right there. And I mean, we've talked about how big this old line is, but they can move in space. Watch this guy, just a little play action. See your big boys get out in space there and sets up that little jab step yep. again. And Trayvon's around to get the corner. Well, he's so much fun to watch after the catch, you know, that it, where he gets that, makes that second and third cut. First and goal now from the four for Montana, just underway fourth quarter. They'll stay on the ground. And Jordan Canada, close to that goal line, is gonna be stopped two yards short of a touchdown, so. Very patient running there yeah. by Canada, as you could see him, he wait, nicely waited, 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 waited to try to find his hole, running on that left side again, John Smang and Trevor Poole. Canada stays in the backfield, second and goal from the two. Canada lowers his shoulder, falls forward, and no signal. They're gonna say he's a, just a little bit short. Crowd doesn't like it. Montana going with an, over, uh, an overload on the right side. And frankly, you can see it right there, right in your screen, number 49, Ronald Blair, 6'4", 275, snuck in the backside and stopped it from a, a sure touchdown. So the nose of the football just outside the goal line here. Out of the eye formation, here we go. Canada again, and this time, Yep, touchdown. Had to wait for the signal, but they finally give it to him. So six points for Montana early here in the fourth quarter. Chris, it looked a lot like we talked about in the in the first half, as you saw Montana now in good field position, relying on their relying on their offensive line. I, I've been pretty impressed today. Not only them be able to move the guys up front. But even on that little screen pass, they look pretty good in space for being as big as they are. So Leiter's on for the extra point. And he splits the uprights. 13-13 to go in this one. Grizz extend the lead to 23-6. Here's the Ford scoring drive for Montana. Six plays, 42 yards. The one yard run by Jordan Canada now upping the lead at 23 to six. And now I think if you're Appalachian State, you gotta dig into the playbook a little bit because running the football is not gonna get it done. So we take a look at scores from around the big sky. Weber State in a wild one, leading Stephen F. Austin 50 to 40. South Dakota beats UC Davis, Eastern Oregon. And Washington will take it at the five. Upended at the 15. And again, good special teams play. There's a flag on the field. But that was an open field tackle by Jake Dallacera, who tripped up Washington right at the 15. Let's see what the call is. Joey Kuntz, uh, again, down the, the missile, as they call him. Just go down and sacrifice everything you got. Did the same thing he did last time and blew up the play. A 
unsportsmanlike conduct on the return team, taking off his helmet. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal, first down. Boy, you don't need that, right? You're trailing 23 to six. And Coach Satterfeld uh, in his first game as the head coach of the Mountaineers, that'll put a few gray hairs on him. Oh, you know, the Mountaineers staff just has to, you have to look where we were three minutes ago uh, after that big punt that wasn't received down with, the, with their back against the, the south end zone, a turnover, a big drive, a touchdown, and now this. Yep. Again, this thing's flipped on its head. Jamal Laundry Jackson is back in at quarterback. So he's going to shake off the injury and see if he can rally his team here in the fourth. He comes out firing. Has a man in the flat at the 10. Oh, big hit at the 15-yard line. Catch was made by Andrew Peacock, and he paid for it as he was tattooed right at the 15-yard line. Nice job by Nate Harris. You can see here on the outside, keeping that containment and rolling back inside. A good pickup for App State, though. Eight yards, seven, eight yards on first down. Gives you a lot of options. Montana rolling a safety down here, you can see. And this one's just thrown away. Pressure straight up the middle. And I mean Jackson took a shot at the end of the play. Check out this pressure coming right up the middle. Montana there rolling safeties down. That's right where Laundry Jackson wanted to go. The safety rolled down. It was number 12, Matt Hermanson, that rolled right in the hole that he wanted. App State backed up against the north end zone. And that was Bieneman applying the pressure for the Grizz. So big third down here for the Mountaineers. Jackson fires out there to Ferguson, and he won't go anywhere. Well, they tried to get it out there and let him do a little running, but it was shut down immediately for no gain as Nelson came in and made the open field tackle. Big stop by Montana here. You can feel, you can feel the momentum slip away again there. Oh, there's Jackson taking another shot. And that'll force Appalachian State to a three and out. Critcher into punt. He's standing inside the five yard line. Nice kick. And that's fielded just over the 40. Henderson trying to get to the outside at midfield and now runs out of bounds. So Montana with the short field here as they have the football right at midfield with 11.43 to go in the fourth and the lead at 23-6. We're back after these words from your local stations. You're watching KTMF Fox. And the upcoming schedule for Montana, they'll have the week off, and then they'll be in Grand Forks to take on North Dakota at the Alaris Center. North Dakota team just pounded Valparaiso Thursday. Oklahoma Panhandle back home, and then a key road test against Northern Arizona late in September. It's a long season, John, as you well know, and it's always good to come out and have a good first season opening effort. And Montana adding to that is Jordan Canada with a nice piece of running straight up the middle for a gain of 12 and a first down. Let's go down to the sideline for a Honda report with Sean Rainey. Yeah, guys, I've been kind of hanging around the App State sidelines here in the second half, and Jamal Laundry Jackson, you know, hasn't been playing, but right after that last interception, he threw his helmet on, said he's going in. But, guys, the Grizz defense is playing pretty tough right now. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he uh, he took two pretty good shots there after he released the football in that last series, John. Well, no doubt Montana wanted to keep the pressure on him. He, he's the threat that, that's been on the field. And the more they can get a hat on him, the more uncomfortable he's going to be. Montana content to stay on the ground. The gain is to the 45. Well, the clock is definitely a factor now as Montana will start to work on that. Second and eight from the 45. This is the time in the game. It's been long. It's been hot out there that you can you can see what what team's better conditioned than the other. Here's Johnson. That throw was high inside the 30 yard line. 
intended for Nacarado, but it was too high even for him, and so that'll bring up third down. Now that guy's a Grizz fan, is he not? I mean, that just, that right there says Montana Grizzly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That says the bitter huh? red Montana Grizzly. You bet it does. You know you're home, right, yeah, if you're yeah. a Montana fan. That's, yep. You see a lot of that, folks. They have some sort of fan base here in Missoula, do they? They just announced a new attendance record, 26,293. Here's Johnson on third down. Has a man wide open across the middle. This is going for first down yardage and then some. As Jones makes the catch. You know, Jones has showed up, hasn't he, when they need him. I, it, I don't know how many times tonight we've seen him make a key third down reception. You're absolutely right. It, it, it seems like every time they've needed it, and they've had two of them coming across the middle, just like that. Just kind of a lazy sweeping route across the middle, right underneath App State's linebackers, and he's got enough speed to scoot it up and get a first down. Big first down conversion for Montana. Down to the 27 and a first down. Clock continues to run. Now inside 10 minutes. Boy, that is just good hard running, and that's another first down. Oh, they let Joey Koontz carry the ball a little bit for uh, going down there and blowing up those kickoffs. You got to give him a little something. Give him a little, give him a little butter. Give him the rock yeah. in the fourth quarter. Give him a little butter and let him go. <laughs> Trayvon Van now in the backfield for Montana on first down. The gain is to the 15. Van tries to scoot outside. Gets by one, but then taken out of bounds right at the 10-yard line. He does manage to get four yards on the play, almost five. Danny Kistler, you'll see on your screen here, is very lucky right yep. there not to have a 10-yard holding penalty. An injured player down on the field for Appalachian State, and I think that's one of their corners, Roger Walker. There's the numbers on Van. He's over 100 yards in his Grizzly debut. 17 carries for 106. That's a pretty good average and a touchdown. Well, I think, you know, Montana's coaching staff and fans certainly have to feel good to, to see. There, you know, over the years, you can see where teams have a void that needs to be filled. And, you, you know, Coach Delaney is very careful about right when you're now, bringing in transfers and what have you and feels real good and made comments about the fact that he was a he was somebody that they were welcoming to the team and was a great transfer and a great opportunity. All right, so 929 to go in the fourth quarter. Montana leads 23 to 6. And we're back with more from Washington Grizzly Stadium. You're watching Big Sky Game Day. Second and six for Montana. The ball on the 11 yard line. 929 to go in the fourth quarter. And this is no doubt make or break time for Appalachian State if they want any chance at all to try to get back into this. And, and that would be a stretch. They'd have to keep Montana off the board here. Oh, Johnson now throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana. Wow, what a nicely designed play. And Jordan Johnson just runs the bootleg to Jordan Harper, the great Falls product. Beautiful play call, really got to enjoy Then We've talked about it all game. You had the ability to run and that keeps everybody off center. At least it keeps yeah. them off balance, gives you another step. Johnson's able to square his shoulders running across uh, uh, his body there and make, it, make a great throw. And that may seal it for Montana as they up the lead now to 29 to six. Lighters on for the extra point. And he's got it. So Jordan Johnson on a perfect strike to Harper for the touchdown. Comes at 9.23 to go in the fourth as the Grizz up their lead. For any. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Payne West Insurance. Clients, colleagues, community the Montana Honda Association. Visit your local Honda dealer and by Blackfoot Telecommunications Group, the region's business technology leader. 
Last forward scoring drive, seven plays, 60 yards, and the 11 yard pass from Johnson to Harper ups the lead to 30 to six in favor of Montana as we wind down here in the fourth quarter. And again, this will be taken by Washington at the five, up over the 20 to the 25, still on his feet to the 40, and finally ridden out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Boy, you have to be so careful. He was a consensus preseason All-American pick at special teams, and there you see why. Let's take a look at the rushing comparisons, John, and this is Van versus the entire Appalachian State team. Collectively, they've rushed for 123 yards. Van, 17 carries, 105 yards with one score. Well, you, you heard App State come out after half, and they wanted to run the ball better, and that was something they wanted to come in and control the line of scrimmage, and that was pretty evident from the beginning that wasn't happening. Right up the middle in a short gain as they give it to Joshua Denard. Let's go down on the field to Sean Rainey. Yeah, guys, you, you might notice that the Grizz are wearing some new uniforms. Every three years they switch, and Robert Stack told me that all these, you know, while these uniforms are pretty simple and not too stylish, they have many different combinations, two different hats, and many different combos, so you won't see the same thing every single, every single game, guys. All right, so short completion to the big tight end, Barrett Burns, and Burns close to a first down, but I think they're going to be just a little bit short. Burns putting his head down on uh, Goodwin. Kind of unfair to have a, a corner have to turn around and face that. But a good, nice third and short opportunity here for a, a must-have. Oh, they try to run and going nowhere. And that time, the Montana defense completely shuts that down. Nothing doing. And that's Zach Wagaman in the backfield for the stop. Laundry Jones, Laundry Jackson with just absolutely nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Now it brings up a fourth and four. <laughs> Trying to get the play in. Montana's fans yeah. obviously getting the idea here. It's getting very loud. Laundry Jackson, and that is, yeah, they Got give it. him the catch and just enough for the first down. Well, that was a smart play there by Bethard, who knew right where the yard marker was and had just enough for the first down. Just settled in right where he needed it. Yep. Very good play, kept the drive alive. Got to get points on the board here, or it's for sure. Laundry Jackson now with the give and running room big time inside the 20 trips and falls at the 15 yard line Marcus Cox he's been solid in the second half there's a flag down in the area where you see that the holding, holding right yep. there just where it that's why that hole was as big as it was personal foul chalk block number 63 number 73 offense 15 yard penalty Still first down. Critical Oops. mistakes yeah. at critical times in the game. I mean, we've been talking about it here in the last two minutes. This is a must have and personal fouls at real bad times have hurt both teams today, but in, in particular, the Mountaineers. Well, it's going to move them back all the way to the 42 yard line. And that'll be a first and 25 now, so. Let's take a look at it along this offensive line for the Mountaineers, see if we can see it. Yep, that's yep. the whole reason they call those the way they are in their personal fouls is right. it's just that classic area where you're gonna, you're gonna tear up people's knees. Here's a little slant to the inside. It's complete, but really not much there. Peacock with the catch. So uh, Montana will be more than glad to give them that the rest of the game. Yeah, when you're starting in a hole the way that they are, those plays are great like we saw at the beginning of the of the game for App State when they were we were hitting those little four or five yard wide out. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's great when you're in the position, you're in first and second down with relatively decent yardage. Pass is incomplete right at midfield. And again, that was intended for Peacock. Good pressure by Coyle again. 
And Montana really now starting to tee off a little bit on this Appalachian State offensive line. Just unfair for, for App State's game here to, to have them sit back and play the way they want. It's, it's such a, a poor position to be in when the defense can sit back, the, the D ends and the D tackles are pinning their ears back and, and Montana's got some good ones on that front four and they can create pressure without any, when any blitzes. Third and 22 and this is gonna go as a big gain. Pass is caught, a nice catch by McElfresh. We haven't seen him at all in the second half. He's close to a first down, but he'll be short. App State's got a, a, a nice little mix and match of inside receiver screens and ha has had some success with them today. Right there, at least gives you yourself a manageable fourth down. Try to pick something up. You're not looking for a touchdown. You're looking for six yards. Fourth and six. Clock continues to run. We're under six minutes in the fourth. And it is deafening in this stadium right now. Too much time. You got you got 4:45, and you're letting this much time run off the clock. If you're if you're trying to score, you got to go. Here it is. Jackson's pass is complete. And boy, by the way they're spotting the football, he will be short by a yard. And again, Laundry Jackson took a big shot at the end of this play. Laundry Jackson's taken it all day. He's really been knocked around, particularly in this second half. Nice job of holding up there. But you know, we've seen that from the Montana State defense, especially in the second half at Holmes on that play, where when they have put pressure on it, hit him, they have backed off. So they haven't they haven't drawn any penalties, they're doing it the right way, yep, applying the pressure, giving him a shot, but not doing anything where, he, where you'd be leading with the, the helmet. You got it. So Montana now will try to work the clock here for the final five minutes of this game as Jordan Canada gets the call. He'll lose a yard, maybe two. Not rocket science here, but no. hold on to the ball and, and let the clock go. Well, Montana certainly, John, in position to open with a very impressive win. Uh, Appalachian State came in with that number 12 national ranking. And I, in many ways, I think Montana, they didn't, they weren't picked to finish in the top 15 in the country in the poll because I think a lot of people wanted to see, okay, we think you could be pretty good again this year, but let's see it. Yep. Let's yep. see what you can do. And then, and I think they've done that tonight. I think they've come out and established the fact that they're a pretty good football team. And if you look around the Big Big Sky Conference, the preseason pick was Montana State, Eastern Washington, and the Grizz in at number three. The people that follow the conference know Montana's got a pretty good unit. 5.02 to go here in the fourth. No. There's the player shaking up on that blast, but that's Kevin Walton, the backup defensive back. And here's the play where he got hurt. Ooh. Yeah. Well, oh, that doesn't look good. Nope, not supposed to bend that way. No. All right, so we're under five minutes to go. Clock continues to run on second and 12. And here we go as Canada, with a burst of speed, takes it over midfield and all the way down to the 44-yard line. Jordan Canada's got a, a nice little burst of speed. You can see it right when he gets right through the there. hole. It's just, it's just fun to watch where you can actually see the guy take it in. You know, we've, ta we've talked a lot about Trayvon Van, I think with good reason. But Jordan Canada uh, very quietly has had a very good night as well. Uh, running the football for Montana and you know, it's that two-headed attack in the backfield it, You know where you got two guys that have different styles and they shuttle them in and out now We've got van back in there tailback and that just creates nightmarish problems for the, the for the defense it really does There's van with the short carry to the 41 yard line gets three on the play second and seven from the 44 and it John I think that you know we were talking a little bit about the Big Sky Conference and, and and the top three we mentioned with with Montana State deservedly the pick at number one right now and it, what an outstanding program they've built there under Rob Ash and they're going to be very very good this year Eastern Washington just knocked off the 25th ranked team in the country in Oregon State we know they're good uh, they typically knock on the door Montana 
can be right there like they almost always are. And then you've got three or four other teams that are pretty good this yeah, year. Yeah, the parity in the big sky is unbelievable yeah. this year. And that's it's a great conference. And you see that year in and year out when you watch the performance of big sky schools in the in the playoffs right. and in the national championship. I, I, that's what's fun, you know, as, as football fans in Montana and, and the, the West here is to watch, you know, this conference grow. We don't really know what's how that's going to shake out now with the, the conference doing what it's doing. But we're, we're very fortunate to have the high level of quality we do. Absolutely. And there you see Jordan Canada's pushing up to close to 100 yards on his own on 23 carries. He, he's got it done more the hard way. Uh, whereas Vans had, he's been the big game breaker running the football. So a third and two for the Grizzlies on the 36. Yeah, I like, I, I'm a guy that really likes the expansion in the Big Sky Conference. Van has a first down. I like the expansion of the league. Uh, I think, and I think the teams that have been brought into the league are very, very good. Uh, and Southern Utah, I think, has a, a tremendous program. We know that Cal Poly has an outstanding program. UC Davis on the rise, and then some of the, the some of the other teams that have been in the conference have been playing better football. Northern Arizona back in the playoffs last yep. year, so you, you can't take a day, you can't take a week off in this conference. And if you win it, you've earned it. And when you look around the country at, at the FCS conferences, there's three or four of them that really are the cream of the crop. Yep. And you'd have to say the Big Sky's one of those now. Absolutely, uh, you're you're absolutely correct in the fact that. Over and over, you put quality, quality teams on every week. As a fan, it's fun to watch. And that's Jordan Canada. He, I think he decided I'm getting my hundred. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get, gonna get my, my hundred. I think he got it right there. I think there. he got it on that one right there. Well, we talked about it. You, when you're in this position in the game, and and, and this thing's going going away now, but. Even in the fourth quarter, you rely on your big guys up front. You know, they, if you feel you've conditioned all year, uh, and I certainly haven't, I haven't seen that, that App State's not in good condition, but that physical strength of that, of that front five of Montana, yeah. just the size. Uh, will just wear you down wear eventually, you down. and that's exactly what's happened is, you see Jordan Canada now is over 100 yards. He gets the call again, down to the five yard line. Minute 30 to go in this one. Certainly, uh, they don't need to score again. They could take a knee. I think Appalachian State's pretty much conceded. They're just uh, ready for the clock to run out as well. And yeah, it's a it's a tall order for any team to come here and win. There's no question about that. Uh, if you look at the numbers at Montana at Washington Grizzly Stadium, they're phenomenal. They win 84% of the games they play here. And, and that includes playoffs and everything else. And there's a reason for that. And you and I spoke a little bit about that earlier. There's a reason why you make those national championship runs when you're based at, at home. Yeah, because, well, you're playing here. Because of the advantage of, uh, of this crowd in the stadium. Yep, no question. Yeah, Grizz will go into the uh, victory formation here. And, uh, boy, what an impressive 2013 opener at you know, all the troubles that uh, the school's gone through in the offseason, the uh, Jordan Johnson debacle, the, the NCAA sanctions that they pretty much levied on themselves. The NCAA pretty much just said, well, you know, you sanctioned yourself. Yep. We'll go ahead and go with that. The good news, though, is that they're back. They're bowl eligible. Uh, most of the infractions that they had were of a minor nature. Yep. They do lose a few scholarships, but it's time, you know, to right the ship, move forward, and, and uh, the result has been a season opening win tonight and a very impressive one. Yep, and, and that. Here's the Northwestern Energy play of the game. And why not number eight, huh? It should be. You know, there's a couple of people that played very, very, very good today. He's one of them, I think, probably the most surprising. And what I, you know, the impression I get is that the, the crew that they have to thank is Mick Delaney and his staff for holding together. All right, so Montana opens the fall season with a 30 to six win over 12th ranked Appalachian State. We'll be back to wrap things up after this. You're watching Big Sky Game Day. Trayvon Van had the play of the game for Montana. 
Trayvon Van is also the player of the game. 20 carries, 118 yards, and a touchdown. A very, very impressive debut for the running back, the transfer from Marshall. It was an impressive day for the University of Montana. You know, like you say, that's been a uh, last 18 months, and there's a group of people that, regardless of how much support they didn't or didn't have, supported themselves and that's that football team and that coaching staff and you really got to take your hands off and it's going to be interesting to see where Montana goes from here. Yeah, no question. They do have an off week as we said. Next week's the bye week and then it's on to Grand Forks, North Dakota as they take on the University of North Dakota first road test at the Alara Center. So for all of us here at Max Media, for John Edwards, the former Grizz quarterback, great working with you as always, Thanks, John. Chris, Enjoyed the heck out of that. I'm Chris Byers saying so long from Bozeman. What? Let me, I was going to run.